Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob has a podcast. And now here's a guy who's ready to drop a bunch of Ben bombs on you here tonight. I am Rob Sesternino. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the coverage of the 33rd best season of Survivor as voted by the fans of Rob's podcast. Survivor Heroes versus Healers versus Hustlers, season 35 of Survivor. Myself and our panel has done a full rewatch of season 35 of Survivor, and we are ready to talk about uh, the, the good, the bad, all of the H's in between as uh, we go through Heroes versus Healers versus Hustlers here with you live tonight. Of course, uh, we will have our patron feedback show over the weekend. Any questions that we don't get to tonight, I'll be covering with Dan Sinensky in our patron podcast feed this weekend. First, uh, making her debut on the all-time season rankings uh, countdown. Uh, she is my co-host on uh, Tough as Nails and the host of many a post-show recap. Please welcome in a, a true hero and hustler, Jessica Lise. Jess, how are you? Um, I'm great, Rob. I'm ready to church this up. Church this up. Yeah, are you a healer also? I I don't know. I put a Band-Aid on in my time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Healer of boo-boos as well. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've got a kid. I, I kissed a boo-boo. Okay. All right. Uh, Jess, very excited to have you here. Are you wearing your Ryan Ulrich? uh red shirt tonight i guess i'm i guess i am repping the hustlers tribe yes not a turtleneck but it'll close enough it'll do close enough okay and then uh a uh, another hustler is here a man who is uh appearing for the third time in eight weeks in our all-time countdown please give it up for Chappelle. hi <laughs> hell how are you I'm good, and I'm I'm back for the third time. Yes, I'm excited. yes. Uh, three H's, three appearances for Chappelle in the all-time mm -hmm. season rankings uh, countdown to talk about Survivor Heroes versus Healers versus Hustlers. Chappelle, what do you identify with? Hero, healer, or hustler? I think I'm a healer of sorts. Yes, heal with <laughs> your laughter, right? Laughter is the best medicine, and I laugh a lot. So if, if, if nothing else, I'm healing myself for yes. sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, excited to have you back here on the panel to talk about a season that, yeah, I'm very excited to talk about this one here tonight. That this was, uh, for me, I, I thought this was fun. Uh, you know, it is a slow burn in the pre merge. It's the only season that starts in three tribes and swaps to three tribes. I believe it may be a season that has killed the three tribe format, but it is quite a ride in uh, the post merge, ultimately culminating in ben's uh big run to the end from the final seven on uh, we'll talk about it all here tonight all right um let's i guess let's let's talk some uh big picture stuff jess uh what was your feeling about hhh Were you, are you here because you are an hhh defender well rob i would say i am like 66 percent an hhh defender um I really, apparently I ranked this surprisingly high and like, don't ask me where I ranked it because I'm not the kind of person that can be like, well, I ranked this one 23 out of 40. Mm -hmm. Like I can tell you what my top five are. I can tell you what my bottom five are in the middle. It gets kind of, eh. So I honestly, I think this is one of the strongest casts they've ever had. Mm -hmm. I think it was just a fun season overall. And you know, David Bloomberg came on here to talk about Survivor Thailand, and he had the most wild hot take I've ever heard in my life, which was that this was a top five. It was a top, top five four, season. For, yeah, yeah, top four, baby, because of where he was at personally in the fandom when it hit. And I yes. think this is my Survivor Thailand because I think most of my warm feelings about this season have to do with where our HAP was at the time yeah. and what kind of community we were fostering. This was the birth of the wand off. This was the birth of first one out. It was kind of the first time that I, I, I think this was maybe the best live event that we ever had in. The, I think this was, this was on the movie theater, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I honestly, I can't remember I, we, we keep going up and up yeah. and up. I wouldn't say we peaked, but it was definitely a highlight season for me just on the grounds of yeah. where we were as a podcast. I do have uh, the first item in my good and bad list. Uh, the podcasts were lit. 
uh, that mm. I have that as in the good uh, list. And yeah, it's the only season that brought the three of us uh, together. I watched uh, an episode with you, Jess, and an episode with you, Chappelle, this season. Yeah, that was my first and only live know it all <laughs> in Austin. And I was mm -hmm. very excited to be there. And no one knew who I was. I got in, I watched, <laughs> I laughed with people. Imagine the I next time you're at a live event, Chappelle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> you'll have to wear a cos like a disguise. I'm gonna go full Terran and just use like the back door and the tunnel and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff to get in and out with like a hoodie yeah. on. Um fake yeah, nose and glasses. No, all yeah. you gotta do, Chappelle, is just don't say anything. Like this is my this is my live event tactic. I just walk around and I don't say anything. And as long as I don't open my mouth, nobody has any idea who I am. I was at the the live know it alls in Austin, and no one knew who I was, and I still couldn't keep my mouth closed. So I, I <laughs> doubt that That's I'll be true. able to pull this off. But I did who get to meet Tabulator and Rob, and uh, I think I spoke to Steven Fishback as well. So this is a important season for me for those same reasons. Uh, I'm happy to be joining you on that journey right now. Okay. Um. All right. I guess uh, let's start our discussion of HHH. I know that sort of like the low hanging fruit is to talk about uh, the end game and the idols, but let's just talk about the theme because I don't want to lose it. Uh, the theme here that even three years later uh, to go back and look at this, this was a eye of the needle that they were trying to thread and they could not get it of why on earth was there a season about the epic struggle between the heroes, the healers, and the hustlers? Uh, we did brains, brawn, and broody, uh, beauty. Uh, <laughs> we did uh, like sort of like a white, like a class, like white collar, blue collar, and sort of threw the no collars in there. Okay, fine. But this was something that these people were were never lined up as opposites in any way, shape, or form prior to this. This was just three things. Yeah. But it was three alliterative things, Rob. <laughs> That's what's most important. Did we have enough H's to make the theme of this season? If we had enough, then I think it's fine. Uh, but I'm with you. This is stupid. And I mean that with the most sincerity because... Any of these people pretty, pretty much could have gone into any of these tribes. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, this they could have just called this, you know, what was it? Uh, red versus blue versus yellow. And mm -hmm. it would have been fine, you know. Um, you know, like calling the actuary uh, a hero and then giving like 15 confessionals about like, as an actuary, I mm -hmm. use this as a survivor. Like, okay, we get it. But they really, really tried to make us, like they really tried to make Fetch happen here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just never going to happen. Yeah. I do feel like that this is an interesting season that I do feel like that this is the beginning of like the postmodern survivor era where this is coming off of game changers. I do feel like it's also the first season of the six in a row that men are going to win that. I do feel like that this season, like there are things that are here that are all the way through to survivor 40 that are kind of like new things for survivor. I just feel like that they sort of like, this is the second year in Fiji that I feel like that they're feeling feeling like a little bit of like uh, already like uh, the F Fiji, like a uh, burnout of how to, oh, like how do we keep this interesting for us over the time that we're going to spend in Fiji? And I just feel like that this is like the first season of six in a row that have a very similar feel. Yeah, I would agree with that, Rob. I think it is, it is also the first year of the, I, I think this was the year that it really became evident what the disconnect was between what production thought was what a, was a good survivor season production slash the Facebook casuals and what the deep viewers like this is the schism writ large. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you expand a little bit on that? Uh, what, what are the things in particular? And we, we may have uh, just maybe frozen for a second. Uh, yeah, was, uh, you guys are yes. both frozen. I'm sorry. Yeah, could you? That's okay. Uh, just could you expand on that a little bit on on the schism that you feel like specifically of the disconnect and not of your internet connection? <laughs> I can hop out and hop back in if you think that'll help. Sure. Um, I, I think you seem okay right now. Eh. 
I mean, okay. I, from 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 Jess, from what Jess is saying to me, it sounds like the production was trying to give us what they thought that we wanted, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you you want more twists, you want more advantages, you want more fire making, you want more excitement, you want you know um, all of this, and then you want the outplay, the outwit, the out like you want all of that, and they threw it all at us at one time. They yeah. gave us a hero story that they thought we would have won it. They gave us the winner that they thought we would have won it. And it just sounds like they just missed it just by a lot, a little bit all the time. Well, you know, <laughs> it's, it's wild that they would think that because this season is coming off of game changers, which ended famously with advantage getting and Suri being knocked out of the game because of all of the advantages pulling up. And it was like the, uh, the, maybe the one modification they made was, hey, uh, we heard you like advantages, but we're going to put a shot clock on some of them that they will only be able to be used here for in this vote or in this round of play. Yeah, the shot clock helps for sure because we don't want another Sari thing happening. But it still was a lot to digest, honestly. You know, Devin's famous, this is not an advantage moment. You know, like, who was asking for that? You, that's mm -hmm. that's kind of hard for Devin to even swallow. You know, like, gosh, I get this advantage. It says secret advantage. I take it to the tribal council, and it's not that an advantage. That is not an advantage. Yeah. Exactly. And then, like, even with Chrissy's advantage, quote, unquote, mm -hmm. you know, it's the, it's the final four uh, fire making challenge that we all hate. You know, yeah, so, that's... like, there are these advantages, or are this just things y'all making us deal with? because you want to spice it up and nobody yeah. nobody was clamoring for that yeah Chappelle that I thought it was also interesting that in the finale uh Jeff also really tried to uh tell us that this was a season all about secrets and that he's that Jeff tried to and I got I don't know if they were gonna like retcon this but Jeff said no when we created this season we wanted a season that was going to be all about secrets who could keep them who so we put uh so many things out there we wanted to see who could keep them secret it does work out in the story that Ben ultimately wins because he is the only person that finds things and doesn't tell people that he has them like that's the one thing that he does differently from all the other players who seem to be under the belief hey if i will share with the other people that i'm working with that i have this thing that will only uh strengthen our bonds yeah i mean the other person who probably did that as well to their advantage is uh is ryan so Ryan mm -hmm. finds the secret advantage to the first day on the boat. He gives it to Chrissy. He has no clue if he's ever going to link up with this woman again. When they swap tribes, boom, they're together. And that is why he's able to, you know, uh, progress in the game so much because of that secret advantage. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that does benefit him uh, a lot and not and keeping that because he's able to form a bond with his own tribe, you know, with yeah. um, Devin and Ali. But he also had this secret advantage that was able to carry him all the way to the final three because him he and Chrissy never uh never move out of lockstep from that point so yeah Jeff has a point but like you were saying everyone else told all the secrets literally everyone else it was it's kind of fascinating to watch the season and try to be objective because there's so yeah. much questionable gameplay involved yeah it moves um, everywhere well, for Ryan, uh, like really the thing that kind of does him in is when he has the secret that he has the idol and he tells he tells Devin and then he also tells Ben. So he does get done in by that. Also, the fact that he tells one too many people that he's uh, a person that has the idol, and then Devin completely loses trust in him because he said, oh, he told me that I was the only person that uh, he knew that uh, he had the idol. Uh, Jess, we were just talking about how that uh, Jeff in the finale tells us that this is a season all about secrets and who can keep a secret versus who blabs to the other people about the secrets. Did you feel like that that held as a theme of the season? Yeah, I think it definitely did because you saw so many people blow up their game over spilling a secret to someone else or it mm -hmm. comes out like, as you've just mentioned, Ryan telling two different people that they're the only person that knows about his idol. And I think also Ben not telling anybody that he had an idol and then Ben not telling anybody he had another idol and Ben not telling anybody he had another idol, I think also plays into that secrets. And, you know, the biggest secret of all that production kept giving these idols to Ben so that he would win because for some reason they liked him. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, I, guess, I thought, yeah. I thought Wait, the biggest not a secret. <laughs> no, I thought the biggest secret of all was let's make a final fire making challenge so that yeah. we could win when we yeah. run out of it. Is that not the biggest secret? Maybe that's yeah. the biggest secret. 
All right. Well, so <laughs> you both bring up a very valid thing to talk about uh, with this season. Um, I guess let's let's talk about the final four fire making because I feel like that that gets lost a little bit in uh, when we talk about season thirty five. There's so much to talk about Ben and all of his idols, but this is a season in which um, and, and it's a little ironic because that we have I think maybe uh, the greatest final four challenge in recent memory of the incredible challenge of spell out heroes versus healers versus hustlers where Ben has it, but the upside down you just the upside down you is an icono an iconoclast. And it's such a, it was a great challenge. It, it played so well. I was in the room uh, when the, at, at that finale, we can make fun of me later uh, for that. And you know, the room was going crazy. It's the, uh, you know, uh, like it, it's top three loudest pops that the room has ever been uh, of any finale I've been to with, uh, the Dominic and Wendell tie and zero votes in Cambodia. That's the, the three loudest times that uh, any finale I've been to has ever gotten. Uh, maybe the other, when Jerry uh, got booed in uh, Survivor All-Stars, but that, that's another story. Uh, it was such a huge moment. Ben is out of the game. Uh, but there is a twist. Chrissy gets to open this note, and there is actually a final four fire making. We knew going into the season. It had been reported that this was going to happen, but the players did not know. Yeah, this was this was hard, I think. And because there was a certain point at which you had that in the back of your mind, you knew that this was coming up. And then mm -hmm. there was a point where you saw the writing on the wall. You saw where it was going. And I think that was the point for me at which the season fell apart. And I will defend to the death that the first 10 episodes of this season are all-time greats. It is an all-time wow. great season up until you get to the point, I think, I think the point at which Ben picks up the second idol and you realize, oh, yeah, now he's got a path to the final four and he doesn't have to get voted out at the final four. Mm -hmm. You know where this is going. Yeah, And that, to me, it just kind of... It, it was almost like being spoiled without being spoiled. Like you saw the dominoes fall immediately. It was like, you don't even have to watch the rest of it. You know how it's going to end. Mm -hmm. I, I throw yeah. in the final seven vote. The first time that Ben plays the idol and Lauren goes home. I thought that that mm -hmm. was a really, really good episode. The one that we watched. Yeah. Chappelle. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I thought that that one was all, is also really, really strong. Like, uh, like I, I feel like that from the like beginning of the, of the merge up until episode 11, uh, I, I think is there's some really interesting stuff there. Oh, for real. And, and yeah, that that tribal council with Lauren, where they're just like kind of petty and mean to her for no reason. And then mm -hmm. she goes out. It's it's very it, it's some interesting gameplay at, yeah. at work here. And then it's almost like if that if that idol like the second that idol drops is the second like you can watch the idol jump over the shark on the water skis. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, let's let's try to uh, s stick to one uh, thing to complain about at a time. The the final four fire making. Let's let's stick with that for a okay. moment. Okay. Uh, complain Chappelle. about that. Yeah. Uh, mm. What are you, what are your thoughts about that? Because it, it is here, and of course, like uh, when we were talking about it in the top of the show, of that this season thirty five really sets the tone for the rest of Survivor through season forty, and it will be the first of six seasons in a row where we are going to have the final four fire making uh, in addition to a male winner of the show. Yeah. I, so the fire, the fire making is hard to digest because like Jess was saying, we knew beforehand, the players did not. And it does kind of leave wiggle room for you to think that there's some shenanigans going on, right? Yeah, that the because production yeah. realized their, their golden boy was about to go. And I will say it. that I, I don't think it was something that was reported like when Josh went out and did preseason stuff. And I'm not sure if Dalton Ross was there for that season or not. I think it might have only been Josh. I don't think in any of the preseason press, we knew that this was going to be a twist that was added to the game. What we do know is that it was uh, we reported like uh, by inside survivor that this was going to be in the season. We knew it was coming. 
Yeah, yeah. And so that's why I think it sours a lot of people because you you want these people to have agency in the game. You want everyone to have a fair chance to win mm -hmm. and have the same abilities to get to the certain point. But, you know, if production is you know, kind of throwing idols in specific places, not saying mm -hmm. they are, or even just creating whole challenges to benefit one person or even change the game. Yeah, It's fine if they're doing that at the beginning when everyone knows about it. And we like, okay, even if the players didn't know, if we knew this was set in stone coming, you know, and they were just going to be shocked by it, then whatever. But the idea that possibly they realized, hey, the hero of heroes in this season is making a run for it and we have run out of idols to give him we cannot give him an idol at the final four so what can we do we give him a second chance to make it to the end and i think that is why people are kind of looking at this season kind of kind of crazy however i will say this i don't think it it changed much that drastically for the players who were left had been gone out uh at the final four I don't think this automatically means Chrissy wins. Honestly, I think that's a lot of the, the question is like, does she win because she makes it to the final three? But she's sitting next to Devin and Ryan. And I think sitting next to Devin might have been her downfall as well. I don't know. I mean, I can never prove that. But, you know, they were sitting. she was sitting by someone who was likable and strategic as well. Devin did a good job of putting himself in a position where if he got to the final three with Ryan and Chrissy, he was probably going to win. And that final... For fire making challenge, of course, it helps Ben out. But had Devin won that challenge, I don't think it, you know, I think it, this ultimately hurts Chrissy. But I think this kind of solidifies that Devin wasn't going to win this game. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, nobody likes the final four fire making challenge. But what's so bad about it here is that the players did not have the opportunity to strategize for it. Where, you know, I think that the final four fire making challenge, ultimately, uh, we'll see it a few times before Chris Underwood is finally the person to say, I'll, I will put myself into the final four fire making challenge and sort of like hacks the final four fire making uh, challenge. Nobody had that opportunity uh, that, uh, you know, I, I guess Chrissy had the day to sit with it. And I know Dominic Abate gets dragged the next season for why didn't you go into the fire making challenge against Wendell? Uh, and they did know about it, but it just is not good game design to have something that you throw on the players at the last minute who've been playing this game for 38 days. And now, oh yeah, by the way, uh, here's a new wrinkle that you never saw before. I can think of two places where this happened in the past that yes. it was, that were as egregious to me. Yes. What is it like every time I open my mouth, the <laughs> no, internet you're, goes you're, out? You're, Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, is one is one in uh, Micronesia. One is in Micronesia when yeah. they are playing. They're clearly playing a game. Suri is clearly playing a game to a final three, and then they're like, "Surprise, final two. And then the other one I think is Survivor Thailand, where they're like, "We didn't tell you it was a merge," and it's like you just blew your one chance for the game to be interesting at all by screwing the person who was going to jump ship. And isn't it the one thing you always want them to do? So mm -hmm. that was weird to me. Like to be strategizing for what you think the rules are only to be told retroactively, like the rules are different now. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really didn't like that. And I think, I think if they told them on day one, this was how it was going to be like, we've changed the rules somewhat. And so now you're looking at that final four and you're playing to a fire making challenge. I think that's fine. And, you know, we see it be okay going mm -hmm. forward, but yeah, it, I, I think, I think Chappelle's right. It almost feels like they threw it in there last minute to save their boy. And I don't think that's what they did, but given all the other things, it looks like they threw in there to save their boy. It, it doesn't really, help. There's a lot of things help. that you could say, but like it is, it is weird that they did that. And yeah. like, I don't know if any of them is a smoking gun, but you have then a lot of things that add up like that. Uh, and I don't think that it was necessarily like that. It's, it's, it's hard to say, you know, like, uh, like you, you don't want to feel like think that about the show, but sometimes when they don't, when they give you a situation like this, you know, you do start to ask some, uh, hard hitting questions about survivor. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, the challenge on MTV, 
They do this. Um, in my opinion, TJ just wakes up and decides how he's going to like just throw a wrench into these people's plans. Um, this season, they have like a twist where you can be a secret agent and double agent and, you know, you can swap out. But the first three or four episodes, they didn't know what that meant. So people mm -hmm. were eliminating their partners and then not having a partner and then finding out they got a different partner the following week after, you know, and they don't they don't know from week to week if it's a girl's week or a guy's week, you know, and so that's the kind of thing where in the challenge it works because that's just kind of the format they use mm -hmm. but when you've been going through survivor for 30 some odd seasons at this point and then all of a sudden halfway through a season you decide or you present this information that oh yeah now it's different it's like well chrissy's been applying for 16 seasons had she known this for at least two seasons, she could have planned for it. At least one season, she could have planned for it. But to spring this on her and call it an advantage at the final four, it's not really the most fair thing in the world for me. And so, yeah, you kind of have to wonder, is mm -hmm. this shenanigans or not? And it's something that makes for a potentially exciting moment. But it's the kind of thing that I think hurts the game where that, you know, when you had a final two, people had to have a final two. If you had an alliance with three people, you had to say, well, am I in the two or am I uh, or am I uh, going to be the person who goes out in third place? Because that's not necessarily that fun. And then when they made it a final three, it's like, oh, great. Now we have a final three. But if you had a four person alliance, it's like, well, am I in the final three? Or am I going to be out? But now you have a final four fire making. And now it's like, wait, hey, now we have a four person alliance. So let's just keep our, our group of four together until the end. And we have to like uh, worry less about, you know, what is the jockeying for position in that foursome? It makes people less inclined to want to make moves as they get towards the end game, which I think uh, makes for a weaker product. Well, right, Rob, what it, what are they trying to fix? Like, what was the game flaw in there yeah. that they were trying to correct for by introducing this fire making challenge? I can't think of very many times like there have been a couple of instances where the people we liked the best went out at four. But I don't think it's always the people that are playing the best game. Yeah, well, I don't think it's always the people that should have won. Yes. To go back to uh, like, I think that uh, I don't want to like misquote, but I'm paraphrasing. I think that what Jeff felt like that was the idea of being a provider had been undervalued. So they wanted to find a way to sort of like level the playing fields where if you were a like a uh, strapping provider type for the group, then those skills, because people were so game, game, game focused, they wanted to sort of like equal the playing field to make it easier for that player to get to the end rather than just be picked off if they didn't win the immunity challenges. I don't know if anybody was complaining about that uh, before this season. I mean, the yeah. only thing that you could point to is like, were they that upset that, you know, it wasn't like Brad Culpepper didn't make it to the end. He didn't win in the final vote. It's hard to like pinpoint exactly who was the person that they were trying to make it right for the person. Like I remember after the day after the finale, Adam Klein said that he felt like that this was like a payback for David Wright who was a master fire maker that would have won the final four fire making challenge in their season, uh, which is not the type of person that pops into your mind when you think about who does this serve? Yeah. I, I, my immediate thought was, are they still salty that Rupert never won a season? Is mm -hmm. that what this is? Yeah. No, that, that would he be did have a fourth Matthew. place finish. Yeah, he did. <laughs> that would be for Matthew from, uh, uh, the all star, I mean, from the Amazon, because had he done well, he, fire making, yeah. he would have, he would have killed Rob and then that would have been it. Yeah. That would have been true. It. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know like who this was for. Uh, we watched in Survivor Worlds Apart that they had a fire making there, which, you know, uh, I they love the fire making. Uh, it's fine. But now it's a permanent part of the show. Maybe that's one of the things that perhaps like after this layoff, uh, how excited would, would it be, Chappelle, if it was reported? Uh, season 41, they have announced uh, no final four fire making. People would be so happy, and then the players would be like, "But why have I been practicing all this fire this whole time?" Keep you them know, on their toes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you still need fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're Ryan, who just gonna make everybody else do it. But I think, uh, I think people would be happy, and then there'd be like that, you know, the uh, the the conspiracy theory is like, oh yeah, it's convenient that you do it now, you know, like now the next time we have a you know a, a marine on the show are we going to pull it back out you know like uh, mm -hmm. jeff says we might not do the edge of extinction this time but you know we could see ourselves pulling it back out later on 
Well, when, mm-hmm. Jeff? You can't nah. just bring this on us midseason. We need to know these things beforehand, and the players deserve to know, too. Yeah. Um, devil's advocate, though, just to say, like, uh, it kind of wasn't bad of uh, Tony and Sarah going to the fire uh, in this past season. It actually resulted in, like, the one of the more dramatic moments of the season when uh, Tony ends up beating Sarah in the fire making, and they have, like, the, like, the, they hug, and Tony's crying. So... I feel like that. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't still get rid of it, but I, I'm just saying that uh, with time and the players knowing that it's coming, uh, if you're going to have it, they should have told the players about it. Yeah, I think every other season, maybe, or like you know, rotate things in and out and tell people at the beginning. Yeah. Okay, well now this is the fire token season. This is the edge of extinction season. This is the fake merge season, and yeah. this is the, you know, this is the. Um, this is the final four fire. Yeah, still get season. rid of it. Still get yeah. rid of it. I'm just saying that. Like, I'm, I don't want to be just like, oh, you're a hater. You complain about everything. Uh, look, uh, it, it, it was it was good. It was fun when Chris Underwood uh, put himself into the mm. fire making. You know, it's yeah. it's but we've seen it all. There's nothing left and, to see. And to Jeff's point, this was a very game body season of Survivor. Mm-hmm. Everybody was just game, 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 game the whole time. Like they were backstabbing their closest ally for minimal gain. And so if the goal is to take some of the emphasis off of the game bot, you know, and, and give some more to the provider type or the survival type people, then yeah, yeah, I think it worked a little bit because it seemed like every episode there was somebody shooting themselves in the foot to just progress just a little bit more than they already would have. It was insane. I'm not like a strategic mastermind by any stretch of the imagination, but I was just like, well, why are you doing that? Well, <laughs> mm-hmm. Why is that happening? Well, what are you yeah. doing? That? Why would you why tell did you that? Do, do, do that? Yeah, the <laughs> whole time, the whole <laughs> season. I was like, well, what's that? What, what's the point of that? And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I think they he might've been onto something, you know? Let's talk about Ben and his win here in this season. Uh, it has been a couple of years. It is not a shock anymore that we uh, now uh, might not have been a shock uh, when it happened. Jess, do you have any thoughts on how this uh, winning game of Survivor has held up over the last couple of years? Um, I don't think it was very high to begin with, and mm-hmm. I don't think it's gotten any higher. I think people were big mad when Ben won, mm-hmm. and they have stayed big mad about it. And I got to be honest, I was watching like I, on my rewatch. It just made me matter. Like I had to watch the finale in about five different chunks. I had to put it down and walk away and put it down and walk away. And part of that, it's not just that he, I mean, he's not a bad strategist. He has some mm-hmm. great ideas. He yeah. does some really cool game moves and really like kind of snatches the game back at one point and is controlling it. But then there's a point where he got bested strategically and then still hung around. And at the point where he kind of realizes that it's written on the wall for him, he becomes insufferable. And he's not even a guy that you can feel good about rooting for, which I think he might have been at the beginning. And he's certainly a sympathetic figure. But at the point where he realizes that this game is his and that he can just kind of coast through the rest of the game, he just becomes kind of a jerk to everybody else. And it's and like the Ben bombs are just like, it's not, mm-hmm. it's not cute, dude. It's, it's kind of cocky <laughs> and gross. And I can't root for somebody that's doing that. It's, I, I didn't think it was fun. It wasn't sporting you, for sure. No, I, I, I agree with Jess, but I'll throw something else in there. I think this was a pattern throughout this season for a lot of people. I think Joe Minna kind of mm. comes off like a jerk yeah. when, he's, when he's winning. Uh, Dr. Mike, when he uh, like, breaks bad, he breaks all the way bad. They can't stand <laughs> him. But Chrissy is another good example. I remember mm-hmm. even at Live Know-It-Alls, people were rooting for Lauren Rimmer. They were not rooting for Chrissy because she's the one who's like, yeah, uh, Ben, now that you've bested me, you don't get to see your wife and I get to go on the like, like Mm -hmm. who's throwing the family visit up in somebody's face like that. Ben and and Chrissy, they are like work spouses and they have a ugly divorce. Oh yeah. (laughs) Like they both like, uh, like it's a bit, they have a bitter divorce. Yeah. But it's like that for like all the people, except for maybe like three or four people that, you know, when they get power, like that's why I think people like rally behind Devin and Lauren and these people because they don't get so personal. But Mm -hmm. to the point where Ben is like, I'm creating a fake necklace just so I can. So so Chrissy can find it. Not so she'll stop looking, but just so I can watch her go up there and give this uh, this thing. You know, Lauren calls it. He's like, uh, you're going you're taking it too far. You're taking it too far. Come on. Knock it. Knock it. uh, Knock it off. Um. For me, uh, I do feel like that 
when I watched this season, I watched it so close to watching Worlds Apart a couple of weeks ago. This is the same exact season as Survivor <laughs> mm -hmm. Worlds Apart. It re it really is. And I don't know if we're like, I'm sure people, have, it's not an original thought, but just down to that Ben and Mike are both ex like super, super similar where that they're both sort of like, you know, hardworking person around their camp. They're sort of like uh, getting into friction with people that aren't working as hard around the camp uh, that uh, Ben really gets into it with Cole about him, uh, you know, uh, eating a Cole eats too much around the camp. They both, you know, they come into the merge. They're kind of both running things. Things b go south for both of them. They spend like the rest of the game then like on the bottom trying to work their way back into it. And uh, well, ultimately where Mike wins challenges, Ben finds idols and then uh, goes on to win. Like it was like note for note. It's the mm -hmm. exact same story. Uh, I I'll say this that, uh, like, you know, I'll give my rankings at the end of the show, but I feel like that. I think this was a better version of worlds apart. How about that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll, 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 I'll co-sign that. I think, I think the casting is definitely better. I think there are far fewer duds. And I think, mm -hmm. I think I find, I found Ben initially much more likable than Mike Holloway, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. though they are basically the exact same archetype. And Ben is equally likely to have wanted to name his merge tribe America. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll say that i i found that uh mike and one of the things that i really appreciate about mike mike never said uh a bad word about anybody yeah. uh in the entire season ben i do think that sometimes like uh like it, it comes out where that it's he really gets into the like uh it's me versus them mentality mm -hmm. and i do think i do think that he, uh that does come out in him at times in the season but you know he worked uh, you know, just as hard as Mike did all season long. And there's a lot of stuff about Ben that we forget about uh, where we talked about Mike was like a proto or like a, a blue collar Tony hiding. Ben's doing that kind of stuff mm -hmm. too. Ben's uh, Ben's everywhere. He's spying on people. Uh, he's running around. He plays the spy at one point. There's two episodes where he goes like deep undercover and then tries to. So Ben actually does work very hard. I think he only gets remembered for the idols, but he was all over this season. Like I do feel like that uh, second time around, which is going to be a different podcast. He does seem over it after a certain point, but this time around, like uh, he really does. I, I think you know, I don't want to use the word earn, but he does like work very hard for the course of 39 days. You can stick that guy on the hustlers tribe. <laughs> he, was, he hustled. He, he certainly did hustle hustles. all the way through. Yeah. And uh, another good parallel between Mike and Ben is that they both realized that the tribe was turning on them before like the stuff hit the fan. So people like to say that Mike and Ben don't have good social games, but they did. They were fine in their tribe. They hadn't made anybody mad. People were calling him King Ben and all this other stuff. He stumbled upon this, uh, this plot to get him out correctly. Mm -hmm. And then from there he broke bad because he really had to, you know, like what else could he have done when everyone's saying you're King Arthur, you're going to go, we're getting you out next. Like he walked up on his closest allies whispering, they stopped, they stared at him and he just kind of, Oh, okay. I see what's going on here. <laughs> so he found, he played the idol and then he'd be insane to not continue to look for it. The mm -hmm. problem is he outworked them. Like, he played circles around them. Like even if the most strategic mastermind can't do anything to you if you're immune and yeah. he was immune the whole time. Why every episode starts off with, yeah, Ben's probably going to look for the idol, but what's the butt yeah. for? Follow him. They're like, but he's not going to find it. He yeah. They're like, hey, he won't right. find another idol. Um, yeah. 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 And this is another one of those things that sort of like marks the beginning of an era here in season 35, because in season 34, everybody, holds on to their idols. Everybody, people find idols and they go to, and, they, and then they play them all at the end and then Sari gets out of the game. That we don't really have people playing too many idols late in the game that end up being a factor where we talked about this in some of the earlier seasons with Redemption Island and with One World. People play idols late in the merge. They don't get rehidden. And I was trying to think in my head of like, where's the first example of this? And I do think that in Survivor Millennials versus Gen X, I think so. I think an idol gets played at set at seven uh, or six, and then Adam Klein finds the idol at five. 
Uh, and th I think that that's sort of like a, it, it, it wasn't like, uh, like talked about as much in that season, but I do think that there was a shift there of, okay, every single time the idol gets played, the idol will get rehidden even late into the game. And even in like worlds apart that Mike plays the idol late in the game, but nobody finds it, uh, after a, a certain point. And I'd have to go back and really look at like 31, 32 to see if there's another instance of that. But at some point they make the decision of idol gets played, idol gets rehidden up until five. Ben is the first person to really take advantage to that and like get the cheat code of, oh, I'll just keep playing an idol and finding it, playing an idol, finding it, playing an idol, finding it. So Rob, I'm going to propose something. This might be colossally dumb. Okay. And I, I already, I can, I can feel the ats coming at me preemptively. Here's my hot take. The best feeling. Yes, it's the best feeling. Like I'm about to I'm about to put my foot in it. Here's my hot take on this. Here's how you fix this. Once you find an idol and you play an idol, you cannot play another idol. Someone could play one for you. Ooh. And you could play an idol for somebody else, but you can only play an idol for yourself one time. Hmm. I kind of like that. I like that because then it's not like you can just play it like Russell Hansen, right? You could play mm -hmm, it and then right. the next week you could play it again. And it's like, make mm -hmm. your allies do something. Yeah. Make them do something. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if it would have been impressive if Ben found the idol, gave it to Ryan or something, and Ryan saved him. That's impressive. You yeah. know, finding mm -hmm. the idol is impressive in and of itself. But what Jess is, is proposing is like, okay, I actually have to have a social game, even though I'm doing this. You know, like people have to actually want me to be here, yeah. even though I'm yes. finding the idol. Yes, so, exactly. Uh, I don't hate that. Can I make a counter proposal? Sure. Ooh. What if, because uh, I feel like that that's a little limiting that I can only play the idol once the whole season. What if I can't play the idol at back-to-back -back tribal councils? A little bit like sort of like HOH. Oh, I like that yeah, too. That's a, yeah, that's okay. Or yeah, I can't have the pardon two weeks in a row on Pirate Master. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not that, yeah, but even what Jess is saying, like, you know, you just can't play it for yourself. So even if you can mm -hmm. just convince one of your allies mm -hmm. to do it, I know at some point Lauren, uh, Lauren and uh, Mike and Dr. Mike have uh, split the idol, you know, yeah. he has mm -hmm. an whew, crazy moment. But if even in that moment, like Dr. Mike, can you play this for me? Cool. Got you. And then now we move forward and that shows that they have some agency aside from, let me just wake up really, really early and run around. Mm -hmm. Also finding the idol, as we've seen, makes you more likely to find the idol again because you know what you're looking for. He's yeah. looking at trees, the side of the trees for the map for the idol every time, you know, to the point where he looks down at the side of the raft and finds it, you know, but the people who have not found an idol don't know to be looking for those things. So it's going to be a little bit harder for them to find that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. 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 I think that that's something that they need to address. Uh, yeah. The, you know, this just is too much of like, find the idol, play the idol, find the idol, play the idol. Uh, it makes the show get too far away from, you know, what, what it's supposed to be. I, yeah. I know it can be exciting to have like the unexpected moment, but I feel like, it, it has taken away where in some of these earlier seasons, you know, oh, the idol is getting played. It's like a rarity at the tribal council in modern survivor, this like postmodern era. Like it's almost like a like oddity, like, uh, oh, like uh, there's has not been an idol played uh, two tribal councils in a row. Oh, interesting. It's like a second immunity challenge almost. Mm -hmm. And I think I think part of the problem is they don't see that as a flaw and they don't see that they think an idol like you know how we've started to call every single tribal council a blind side mm -hmm. and what it used to be like a true blind side might happen twice in a season and it was really shocking and amazing and now they're like well everybody's blindsided and it's like <laughs> no if if you get voted out and you're not self-aware enough to know that it yeah. might happen that's not a blind side um yeah. it's it's the same thing here i think they think it's fun when somebody uses an idol so it must be fun if everybody used an idol all the time and if there's always an idol in play and somebody plays one at every tribal council, but it's like, no, it's like trying to eat an entire spoonful of cinnamon. It's not fun. Mm -hmm. Like Rob, imagine how you would feel if you have just pulled off this blind side of, of Dina and Alex and you know, you're looking at Heidi, like you're next. And she's like, boom, idol. And you're looking at Jenna, like you're next. And she's like, I'm immune. And then Heidi's like, bam, idol. And you're like, immune, about idol. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the end. Let's say you get to the end and you have strategically like placed yourself and controlled this game. And now people are like, 
but did you find enough idols? Like, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> like, yeah. what was I supposed to do? Like, just snatch it out of her hand and throw it into the into the Amazon, you know, the, the what is it, the Nile? I don't know. But, you know, like. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's not called Survivor it's, Nile. Yeah. You know? yeah, Survivor the Amazon. Nile. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in the Amazon River. Like, what are you, what are y'all doing? But anyway, yeah, like, what do you do in the where you can't get to someone? You know, like, what can you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this is a great segue to talk about one of the other uh, big controversies of the season of Ben versus Chrissy. Who should have won? I will say that I have this in my good column of eight person jury. Uh, it is the one time even uh, that in Survivor 36, uh, we're going to go up to a 10 person jury, uh, eight person jury uh, was great. I was like, oh, that's all the votes. Oh, that's great. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, sexy. And so, also so everybody nice. got to talk. That was the other great thing about that. So that was good. We don't have like this bloated, like 13 person uh, jury uh, that we get in some of these uh, seasons down the road with the edge even. But an eight person jury was so nice and cozy. So. Eight person jury in the final three. Ben gets five of the votes. Uh, Chrissy only gets two. Ryan gets the one from Devin. And this has been uh, another big controversy where Chrissy, she played a strategic game. She won four immunity challenges. The women actually dominate the immunity challenges in the season. I believe the women win eight out of nine immunity challenges in this season. Uh, ben yet gets uh, five votes from the jury. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on Ben versus Chrissy? Well, I think Chrissy makes the point that she is coming in with the character archetype that is the hardest to mm -hmm. play in Survivor. It is like um, it is it's like going into Street Fighter Two and playing as Cammy. Like, How dare you! <laughs> I, I'm saying if you are if you if you play as Ken, you're going to get to the end a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and and she makes the very good point that it is really hard to be in her shoes and get that far and play a winning game. And, you know, how you know, how long has it been since someone that's the quote unquote mom archetype has won the game? Yeah. And I, I do think there was an undercurrent of a little bit of a sort of unconscious bias against against Chrissy because they expect her to be one way and she was not. But on the other hand, she did, you know, she threw back cockiness as well as she received it. Yeah. Um, I think she certainly had some moments where it was, you know, she was playing the game probably so hard that it started to bleed into the personal lives. Yeah. It's a real tightrope that you have mm -hmm. to walk as a female survivor player to win the game. Uh, are you too emotional? Are you too, are, are you, are, are you too yeah. playing on our emotions? Uh, you, you cry too much. I, I can't vote for you. Uh, I, uh, I'm detecting, uh, not enough empathy, uh, a little too cold. Uh, it's a real yeah. Goldilocks situation. Or, you know, you were, you know, I thought you were my mom out there and then you voted me out mm -hmm. and it's like, or you're nothing like my mom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. tough. It's, it's, it's really, tough. it's a, it's a hard needle to thread. And I, yeah. I don't know how you fix mm -hmm. that. I don't know. I don't know what has to be done. Um, and I don't advocate for necessarily throwing in game twists that are going to favor women. Uh, but I also don't love that you know, the last six winners have been men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have said on the podcast that I do feel like that the final tribal council jury questioning format, yes, Sarah Lacina did win the first one of these, but I do feel like that sort of like the group questioning does lead to more pylons. Although in this mm -hmm. particular instance, it did seem like Ryan was the victim of the pylon here in uh, this one. It didn't seem as much as uh, Chrissy was the the victim of the pylon. I will say, though, that the jury did seem to be like, uh, hey, Ben, uh, especially Joe's questioning, Joe's like, uh, Ben, you gotta like give us some more here because I feel like we really want to vote for you yeah. and you're not, you, you haven't uh, given us enough yet. Yeah, this was another place where it's kind of like they weren't even – sometimes people go in and they vote and you know that they're voting for somebody because they think they deserve the million dollars and they're really excited about it. Some people vote because they don't want the other person to get anything. Mm -hmm. And here it was like they – they really they were trying to talk themselves into having the positive happy vote yeah and 
it was almost, I don't know, you could put your tinfoil hat on and be like, well, it's almost like they know who they have to vote for. And they're just trying to come up with a good reason to make it themselves feel good about it. Shenanigans. So, uh, so I, I actually, I feel like it has more to do with this particular jury about the personal relationships uh, that Joe and Chrissy were really like uh, oil and water from the moment that they met. Chrissy did not like him. He did, he did not like her. Uh, I do wonder like, uh, you know, and, and him and Desi were tight. Uh, I don't, I don't know why JP, uh, didn't, uh, and again, who knows what JP thinks, uh, why, does he do like, anything? Why, why didn't he give more consideration to, uh, Chrissy where he spent a lot more time with Chrissy in the game than he did with Ben, uh, Lauren and Lauren and Ben, uh, seem close. The two votes that Chrissy does get are Ashley and, uh, Dr. Mike. Mm -hmm. So, when when it comes down to Ben versus Chrissy, I honestly don't think that it should that should be what we're comparing it to because for Ben, this was almost his game to lose at that point. Because mm -hmm. if you go to episode 10 and just start there, every episode is Ben is for ferocious. Ben is gonna win this game. Ben is the biggest threat. Ben is da -da 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 -da. Ben is Ben 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 Ben. And so when they get to the end, you have the biggest threat that everyone's been talking about this whole time sitting there. It's kind of like, well, give me a reason not to vote for Ben. And so I don't, I think there's a lot of like, like Jess was saying, like encoded messaging in there as well, right? So like they're looking at Chrissy and like, well, what did you do? We mm -hmm. know she won the challenges, but they're now saying, have you made personal connections with us? And I know that Ben had made those connections, but we have evidence to show that Chrissy had not. Um, when she goes to talk to Lauren, Lauren doesn't even look up. She's like, you mm -hmm. haven't talked to me this whole time. But that's yeah. also a pattern with Rourke. That's also a pattern mm -hmm. with uh, Ashley at some point. Where it's like, Chrissy, you haven't talked to me all week. Even to the point where Ryan goes to Dr. Mike. He says, I've been, Mike says, I've been coming to you all week, Ryan, and you haven't said two words to me. Now you and Chrissy are on the outs, and all of a sudden, we have to talk to y'all. You have to manage the social part of the game. You can't just win yourself to, to, the, to the end and win the game like Mike Holloway did all the time. Um, and you have to put yourself in a position that if you were managed to do that, you're just sitting next to people you can beat. And I think Chrissy and Ryan, that would have been a good final two for her. I think Chrissy and Mike would have been a good final two for her, Chrissy and Joe. But I think when you're looking at Devin getting to the final, the final two or Ben getting to the final two or even Lauren, Chrissy, you might have wanted to, you know, stroke those egos a little bit more and made those connections. And I think she also, in a very game bot way, had been taking note of some of the things these people liked and like their mm -hmm. their stories so that she could spit them back to them, you know, mm -hmm. in Final Tribal Council. She prepared for that. And Ryan correctly caught on. You're just throwing out random facts. Like, sure, I know Joe doesn't like to get married. He said it 12 times. OK, we got it. But did you sit down and talk to this person and make them want you to win? Apparently not. Yeah, but it's funny. Again, that's kind of a it's a catch 22 there because it's like um, she certainly was trying to make those connections and maybe it just like, it didn't feel genuine because she always had the game as the first priority, mm -hmm. but it's like, you can't win there. You know, yeah. she was, she was collecting that information. She was trying to connect with people so that she could have the social game, but she, you know, as soon as she starts giving out the facts, it's like, Oh, you're just spouting trivia. But mm -hmm. it's like, okay, Ryan, what trivia do you even know? Like, can right. you even do the trivia? Like, here's the, you know, here's the level. Like, here's, you know, trivia. Here's actual genuine human connection. And here's Ryan all the way down here. Right. And it's like, at some point, you shouldn't have to be telling people, I know stuff about you. Right? Like, they, yeah. you don't have to, you shouldn't have to say, well, Jess, yeah. remember that time you told me about your son? Like, duh, we talked about him all the time. You know, yeah. and I think. Ashley felt that way about Chrissy. Like she felt like I don't have to explain the connection we have with Chrissy. And she respected her as a game player. She respected her as a, a strategist, as someone who waited 16 years to play this, as a mom, as you know, as a woman who won four challenges. She respected her and so she voted for her. But in those other situations, like I said, people were looking for give me a reason to not vote for Ben and I can give it to you. But if it's not, you know, genuine, then they're not gonna, is it gonna fall on deaf ears? And I think the one person Ryan made genuine connection with, aside from Devin, who voted for him, was sitting right next to him, and that was Chrissy. Mm -hmm. Yep, that that is it's it it is kind of it's almost a theme that everybody went through. I don't even think Ben was that great at it because you even have Joe saying at the final tribal council, Ben, the only time I ever recall you talking to me, you were yelling at me. Mm. And I, I think it was almost like who did the least terrible job of connecting with each other? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, it's an, actually a very good final three in terms of this season. Like we talked about last week with Nicaragua, that it was an interesting uh, final three between uh, Fabio and Sash and Chase. And I do feel like that uh, this is a good final three with uh, three people who had you know very interesting journeys to get there to the end of the game. Um, this is uh, just uh, like a a interesting one to talk about i mean chrissy got a lot of criticism during the season also that there was the whole narrative that chrissy doesn't want to work with women i had kind of forgotten about that and i mm -hmm. went back and i listened to my exit interviews uh with the final five and i remember uh desi had given like a very critical uh exit interview about chrissy uh, and Rourke and Allie, where there had been a couple of women all in a row who came off the show and said like, oh, Chrissy doesn't want to work with women. Uh, but I was happy to see that, you know, uh, Ashley didn't seem to feel that way about Chrissy. Yeah. And I think it wasn't, I don't think it was necessarily, you know, and we even said this, uh, at the time, we didn't know that if it was that Chrissy didn't want to work with women or it was just that the women that were in front of Chrissy at the time weren't the people she was working with. Because I think mm -hmm. she sort of very early on, I think she sort of hitched her wagon to Ryan. Mm -hmm. Like as soon as Ryan showed up in the game and said, look, I gave you this. I gave you this idol. I wanted to save you. I wanted to work with you. Like that was it for her. And mm -hmm. it was kind of whoever was orbiting around there. I think. I think maybe Ryan might have had a problem connecting to women. Um, <laughs> and it's like, that's the guy you're working with. He reminds us about that throughout the season. That oh, he's yeah. had a girlfriend, never been to prom. Like, we get it, Ryan. But yeah. no, I think you're 100% uh, correct. Once she forms this cross tribal bond with Ryan and she ends up on a tribe with Ryan and JP, who she knows from her actual tribe. Those are her two closest allies at that point. So, of course, if Allie's coming to her or Rourke's coming to her, she's like, why would I work with y'all? Ryan is coming with me and JP. So mm -hmm. I would like to work with you, yeah. but Ryan's ready to throw you to the wolves. Ryan threw Allie to the wolves he, like, yes. with no remorse. Well, you know, yeah, so that's probably a bigger story. Talk about that a little bit of that. So in episode number one, a secret, uh, a season of secrets, uh, Ryan finds the secret advantage. And uh, just do you remember uh, where it was? Yeah, I remember it was on the it was on the deck of the boat. Yes, but where was it after that? In his, was it? in his pants. Yes. It's in my in pants. pants. Uh, I'm sorry. There, there's so many in my pants sound clips that I can't keep track. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, that Ryan sends it to Chrissy in uh, the first uh, the first tribal council. And uh, upon further inspection, I had checks notes. This was the, a god idol. This was an idol that yeah. could have been played after the votes. Survivor, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Go home. You're drunk. Why would you want this on the first <laughs> episode of Katrina Radke is like, not today. That would have been amazing. Come on, Rob. Yeah. You cannot tell me that if he'd given it to Katrina Radke and she'd just like given a giant middle right, Katrina, finger to everyone. Yeah, the, the, that's yeah. four that's four votes, Katrina. Like uh like uh oh, well <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm keep shining. <laughs> not like, on my uh, watch. Not on my watch. Ben Bob, is... Katrina bomb. <laughs> it yeah. would have been amazing. Come on. Um and I like that, you know, Chrissy has the power to decide that that's not what's gonna happen and she and she opts to not save Katrina. It made for such an interesting, it was yeah. such an interesting first episode. And you really got a lot of, you got almost no Katrina, unfortunately. No Katrina. And, I mean, thank yeah. God for first one out because Katrina yeah. is like one of the most invisible first boots yeah. that we've ever seen. We would not know this woman from anything if it was not for uh first one out. By the way, yeah. Ashley would have been idled yes, out of the game got that, on yeah. Day three had the super <laughs> idol. But then we get to this point where then Ryan and Chrissy meet up after the swap. And then it's almost like a Chappelle's like a sunk cost where it's like, well, like I sent you this thing. So like this is like I this has to pay off because I picked you. And now it's sort of like now that they have like this uh crazy bond where if it wasn't for this thing, the whole season might have been different. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, a bond like this that's almost invisible, that just kind of formed because of this one moment, it it does affect the season. But we've seen people like, I don't know, Allie and Patrick, who actually have met each other in real life. That's true. And, they, and Allie was like, look, Pat, you got to go. And so, mm -hmm. you know, this played a lot into the way the season went. 
I know it's the reason why they make it to the final three together. It's just, it just is. But you know, had had um, you know, Chrissy used that super idol the first time on Katrina, you know, this could be a completely different season too, you know, because there's no Ashley. And now you got the mom squad versus Ben and Allen, you know, and you know, it 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 becomes something bigger than what it actually was because she held on to it. And I also think not playing it for Katrina definitely started that narrative of she doesn't want to work with women because mm -hmm. it was like, well, why didn't you save Katrina? You knew that you two yeah. were on the bottom. Why didn't you do it? And so for, for there was a lot of strategy going on. was never a thing. Like they just like, yeah. uh, she, no. they, the other four just decided that they, oh, older women are working together. And Chrissy was like, I, I wasn't working with Katrina. Right. Look, we're just old. No, I'm kidding. But no, it was just one of those things like just you're looking for any reason to put people at the bottom of, you know, the totem pole. And Ben says mm -hmm. it and he's like the rest of us are young. They're old women. We're going to vote them out. And I was like, fine, I guess if that, you're looking for anything. But I like that Chrissy was able to recover from something like that. And so, or you know, you could take that original advantage or leave it. But for me, it does kind of drive the season. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it sets up that cross-tribal collaboration that makes the season so interesting. Mm -hmm. And you have those, when they when they swap to three tribes, you have the pairing of like you have a hero and a hustler on each of the tribes pairing off together. And that's almost like, it's almost set in motion by that idol. And the fact that it makes for so many different interesting combinations of people as the game evolves, I think... I think it's fantastic. And yeah, maybe a god idol is a little bit much, but at least it had an expiration date, Rob. Like yeah. what if what if that was just a god idol sitting in the game for yeah, the entire I mean, game? Yeah, let's uh, you know, heaven forbid. Um, but yeah, <laughs> a god idol for one vote, I guess, better than uh, a lot of the other stuff that they do. All right. Let's uh go through some of the good and the bad, and we'll touch on mm -hmm. uh more of these things. And uh going back let's go back to that premiere let's go back to the heroes tribe because i had completely forgotten about this we get an idle strip search <laughs> yes on yes, hero beach on night one that alan ball was concerned that okay jp and ashley they have a showmance they're working together and jp has the idol alan knew the JP had the idol uh, and wanted him to go down to the water and get naked for an inspection. This was, I forgot all about this. This was wild. Alan was so convinced JP had that idol. Well, here's the part I don't, I didn't remember Rob. And once again, JP is such a nothing burger this season. Like he is the mm -hmm. biggest dud on the cast and we made a punchline out of it for the entire season and things like that and things like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> He is still like, how is it that the biggest nothing burger in the cast is the guy that strips down to nothing and swings his junk around? Whoa. And that was the best part for me. I'm like, wow, this is yeah. this is hilarious. I I it's one thing to strip down for somebody who's demanding that you show that you show you don't have an idol. It's another thing to like actually like throw a couple of pelvic thrusts in there. It was it was very <laughs> strange and like that's he was ready for the nut. cavity search. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, your biggest dud on the cast is a guy that's willing to do that. So that's how you he, know it's a good cast. He did the Ball Johnson dance. You know, he had the helicopter it around to let you know that <laughs> yes, it was he, uh, that he was good down there. <laughs> Alan Ball go Johnson. There, but yes. Yeah. But yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's actually I did not forget about that because you know <laughs> this is why this is why representation matters. I'm like, look at Alan Ball, a black man on Survivor. Why are you acting like this? Please stop. <laughs> you know, like, please stop. Because what you said, Rob, is incorrect. Alan knew he didn't have it. He said, yeah, or maybe maybe retroactively he said he knew. But ultimately, yeah. he still made him go through with it. And he thought, this is beneficial for my game. Alan, no. No, it's not. <laughs> Making somebody swang they junk at you ain't never going to be <laughs> beneficial for your game. Ever. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, I think Alan knew JP didn't have an idol the same way Billy Garcia wasn't really in love with Candace. Right, <laughs> right. You can't walk it back once somebody, uh, you know, Ball Johnson's you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that maybe was that like a way of breaking up the showmance of like uh, maybe I, I, I'll have JP just uh, get naked of uh, like, uh, you know, it's nighttime, it's cold, get naked in oh. front uh well, it seemed to have the opposite effect because like two episodes later, Ashley's like, you know that JP? <laughs> yes, I guess so. I, it, but that went nowhere. That showman's no, went nowhere. 
Well, because it wasn't one, but you know, I think she yeah. just thought he was cool to look at. Um, he walks up the beach and she goes, Oh my god, that's huge. And he's like, Yeah, this fish. And I'm like, Oh, whoo, I didn't know where that was going. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, she says, uh, that's a good size, JP. Yeah, that's a good size. She's like, I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've been holding this one in for two weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying, to, trying to get yeah. this, uh, this power couple going. <laughs> um, and, and the Pre merge is uh, is a drag, uh, but we do meet some crazy characters along the way. Uh, Jess, how did Patrick Bolton hold up on the rewatch? I had forgotten all about Patrick Bolton, and he is he's a trip, and he is also. I think there's a phase in this game, like as you get deeper into the game, and you start to have conflicts with people, and it starts to be like. Is you start to want people to go out, it does start to feel like it's too personal and you feel like you might have your feelings hurt. There's a phase in this in this game, usually in the pre-merge, where people can hate each other and it's funny. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe the one of the funniest things for me is the Lauren Patrick rivalry. Yeah. <laughs> and like just the way that they are like oil and water from she day hated one. Him. And she hated him on the weirdest basis. She says, I mm -hmm. can't trust a ginger. But just the way that she like gave zero Fs about disliking him on a personal level. I think mm -hmm. when you get too deep in the game and you know the people too well, it cuts. But here it plays very funny. And there's a point where. Patrick says to Lauren's face, I'm glad you're not looking for the idol. And you saying you haven't looked for it. It's big relief. And Lauren's like, I have two of them. <laughs> and it just yeah. laid me out. And her voting confessional, when he goes out, she says, I hate it for you, but you're aggravating. And mm -hmm. it was, it's just, she was actually funny. very funny. I forgot yeah. about that. She's funny. Oh, she's super funny. And you miss a lot of that. Like kind of the two things I remember about, about Lauren, apart from, Apart from DJ LaBelle Klein basically inventing the wand off when he writes the song about survivor goddess Lauren Rimmer, mm -hmm. I remember her talking on first one out about horseshoe crab blood. Yes. And I remembered her hating Patrick. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how I didn't realize how funny it is. And it's a little bit at Patrick's expense. And I feel like Patrick's life is probably fine now. Probably fine, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. probably fine. But when he goes out, he's like, "You guys are terrible." And mm. <laughs> it was, I, it, I feel a little bad. If it was me, I would probably be genuinely hurt by this. But it was, it was, it, it came off as a very, yeah. There was a lot Just, of levity. He thought a uh, rock was an octopus. He did. <laughs> yeah, he was afraid of crabs. He was afraid of crabs. Yeah. Like, I, uh, no wonder Allie pretended she didn't know. Yeah, him. he was. He, he was a character. <laughs> Uh, that uh, nice to see a uh, friend of the podcast, Simone, uh, for a couple episodes. They were mean to Simone. They were mean to Simone, and they were mean about her clothes after she left. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't love Ryan being like, "Yeah, finally, she's worth something." Yeah, yeah. Ryan, yeah. Ryan was very cutting throughout the season as well. Mm -hmm. like, we wonder why he only got one vote, but he was like, uh, even just throughout the season. When I I remember when Devin and Ashley flip on him, he's like, "We really let these two twenty five year old surfers, sir, you're twenty two. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? You know he's so he's so high and mighty a lot of times mm -hmm. on, and, and throughout the game. Then you like." Well, socially, duh, nobody was going to vote for you because they yeah. hear you saying this stuff about each other and they know you're probably saying it about them too. Um, but yeah, I, I liked I liked Simone pre preseason because the first one out, I remember thinking mm -hmm. like, oh, she's going to be fine. And then to hear her kind of like shunned into this, like Simone's weird, so we're going to vote her out. It's like, oh, well, that sucks. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that. Simone was really fun because I think, I think the only other time that we'd had someone there's two other times I can remember we had someone in the cast that was a friend of the podcast and on a deep level before we got there. Um, like we had Nick Marano and we had Zeke Smith, uh, both of whom we had been like kind of in the RHAP family before they went on the show. But this was the first time that I think it was kind of part of their story that they were RHAP listeners. Simone was one of them and Rourke was one of them where we knew mm -hmm. them before the, before they were even on. And like Rourke, I think even came up to Rob at a live event. Is this right? She came Rourke, up. She yeah. Rourke was at, we did a uh, Rahapcon yes. uh, in Chicago, I think in 2017 uh, or maybe it was the year, maybe it was, it was the year before perhaps. Uh, was, and yeah. And because this aired in the summer of so, so I think feel like that she would have been filming the season at the time I'm thinking of. Uh, but she, yeah, she was there and she was talking about uh, Gilmore Girls against uh, Spencer. 
<laughs> yeah, and she kind of like, on the down low, she's like, "Yeah, I, I might be on the season," or I can't remember. Mm-hmm. I can't remember how she signaled to you that she was that she had been that she already filmed something. But okay, I, I remember that being kind of a really fun moment for the fandom. It's like we can rally behind these two contestants, and then it kind of goes nowhere. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, let's uh, talk a little bit about Ryan because he, I uh, guess, a lot of airtime on the uh especially in the pre-merge uh like not he doesn't get as much in uh the post-merge game just how did ryan hold up for you ryan is funnier than i thought i kind of remembered him as being a little twerp that you know you could tell why he'd never had a girlfriend Mm -hmm. um but he is really funny and he is i think he's at his funniest at tribal council yeah and i think i was really surprised that this did not become a recurring bit for the first for the first three tribal councils he's at he has this interplay with jeff probst where he just like it's almost a proto christian hubicki moment where he like goes off on these long tangents of these analogies and jeff probst is like i have no idea what you're talking about but it's fascinating please go on and then there's mm-hmm. a point where probst starts to throw it back at him and i actually i wrote these all down because i think they're hilarious yes. um, he says um he says tribal council is like a birthday party. Your parents are making you attend, even though you don't like the kid. And um, Patrick is like a newborn baby because you want to love him, but he's annoying and you have to mm-hmm. watch him all the time. Mm-hmm. And then there's a point where, where Jeff Post is like, Brian, it's like you're in a relationship. And mm-hmm. Ryan says, I've never been in a relationship. And yeah. I, at that point, it kind of probes, lets the air out of it and they come back towards the end. But I think Ryan's tribal council analogies are, possibly the best thing about the entire season for me yeah he just it's it's so weird and i don't think he's funny when he's interacting with other people but when he's not like at somebody's expense or when he's mm-hmm. not you know when he's not trying to impress a single person when he's kind of performing i think he he's really great and he was such a great addition to the cast as a character yeah. yeah. And I do wonder like uh what the story would have been uh had had he been like in a David versus Goliath season mm. where he was like uh like more presented as like uh the uh, the underdog and maybe that maybe changes the way that people view him. I, I had read his uh Dalton Ross does a great job. He does uh all of these like quarantine confessionals with all these different survivor players. And uh I, I looked up Ryan's and uh wanted to read about uh what what he had thought about the season and and he actually talked about how he had a really hard time after the season, you know, that this is sort of like uh, in the era where, you know, Survivor Twitter and Reddit is fully formed and people are commenting in real time about everything that's going on. And he really did get beaten up a lot through the season. And he really like took that to heart. He went through like a hard time after the show. And I have to say that I, I hadn't been thinking about him, but I feel like that uh, I, I always felt bad that uh, Chappelle, he was uh, he was upset with me because I didn't do an interview with him after the season. He wanted to tell his story. And I said and I told him, no, come back and go styling. And then uh, that he then uh, and then he, he went away and, and he never wanted to come back. Yeah, that's unfortunate too. Because I feel bad. I feel bad because I feel like I can. I feel like that I uh, like was personally contributed to him having a bad experience with the show. Hey, hey Ryan, well, if you're listening, come back. We'll we want to talk to you now. We'll yeah. we'll give you that interview now because um, you're the best character on the season. Because I listened I mean, to my exit interview with him at the at the finale, and I was even even now I was I was laughing. He was like uh, he was on fire. Yeah, I think strategically he was fine he was like he was above like just the cross tribal alliance with chrissy and then Mm -hmm. like the devin of it all and you know getting to the final seven and making that final step you know that that was a lot he didn't have these idols you know he had an an idol but you know he didn't idol his way to the end he didn't win all the challenges and he's kind of like the avatar for the normal person right the person who can't do the things right like i i don't camp I don't, I'm not athletic. I'm not, you know, uh, like going to be up all night. You know, I'm not a grizzled mm-hmm. military vet. I'm just a You're guy. Not up all wants, night. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I just, I just a guy who wants to play survivor. And I think Ryan does that. And he does it well. I think the problem is again, he comes to the end with two people who he just never have a chance to get rid of ever. Like, you know, and so I think his game is probably underrated. I think if anybody else just flawlessly maneuvered the game without ever having any real advantages, um, well, he had a couple, but you know, like something like uh, like Tommy, 
from uh, Island of the Idols where everyone was getting all this stuff and Tommy had to rely on his social game. And I think Ryan more relied on his strategic game than anything. But in the beginning, it was definitely social. Uh, so, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I wish he'd come back and talk to you. But, um, you know, I yeah, can I understand he's doing why. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I can, and I can understand why uh, he would feel bad because I don't think he should have gotten vitriol for this yeah. season. Uh, well, it was from, his dream to go do it, and then yeah. I, I feel I feel very badly for the people that like if you're a recruit and you get involved with this thing and you don't know what you're doing and then you have a bad experience. Like what the what the hell was I thinking? Uh, I feel like it's more of a tragic story for somebody that this is their dream to go on the show and then it's not what they hoped it would be. Right. You know, it's, honestly. It's not, it's not, oh no, go ahead, Jess. Okay. Honestly, I actually I, I was. I saw Max Dawson tweeting about this the other day. Yes. And um, I I think somebody, this is something like if I was a venture capitalist, I would fund somebody to go and do this. I want somebody to set up a YouTube channel with uh, some instructional videos for people that have been cast for a reality show. Mm -hmm. And it's similar to what they do at the NFL where they, talk to the rookies about how to invest your money and how, you know, not to spend your money. And I think this should be, this should be like required viewing. If you get cast for a reality show, you need to know how to handle your social media, how to handle the haters, how to, how to leverage your brand in a way that doesn't come off as obnoxious yeah. and, you know, when to walk away from it and when not to look at the comments. I think Social media strategy should be like you know, a mini course you have to take before you go on television. When I retire from RHAP, I'll work on that, Jess. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would. I feel like you're the one to do it, Rob. But you got too much on your plate already. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would tell you right now, I would not go on television in the age of social media. That's just Same. never going to happen. It's bad enough to be on a podcast. Same. <laughs> um, but yeah, what what I was going to say was just aside from you know the the way Ryan handled some of his interactions specifically, like. Even the mm -hmm. Allie interaction where he's like, Allie went off on me for blindsiding her. And that's not a good look for her. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, it's very cutting. And so aside from those things, I really don't think he should have been torn apart for his game because I think he did what he could do. And mm -hmm. I think he did it well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's go. We'll come back to that Allie vote because that's a, a big part of the pre-merge where I think that the season uh, could have gone one way and goes a different way. Um, mm -hmm. they, at the... We get the swap, and it's the only season we swap three tribes to three tribes. That uh, we know you like three tribes, but you cannot swap from three tribes to three tribes, especially in a season that's called heroes versus healers versus hustlers, and then drop tribe names on us in episode four and expect <laughs> that we're supposed to know who's Soko, who's Vuku. Forget it. Lay, Forget lay, it. Lay, just just hold the red you're, you're hustlers now. You're you're heroes now. Yeah. Get out of here. Tribe <laughs> names. It after would be a great if they just swap. had to. If they had to embrace those identities too. It's like, well, yeah. mm -hmm. I was a hustler and now I'm a hero, I guess. And I never saw myself as a hero, but now I think I can really rise to the challenge. I love mm -hmm. that. Or yeah. you know, do that with brains, brawn, and beauty too. <laughs> yeah. like now i'm now i'm a beauty because i'm over here on this tribe uh no i agree with you if they're going to switch to tribes they should have left them still heroes healers and hustlers and made them kind of shoehorn themselves into that That's identity right like, as an actuary i am a healer because i look at the numbers and i decide and fix what them yes and fix mm -hmm. them i heal these people's taxes their Question pain. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, Factors so, bring yeah, mental yeah, anguish care. to people, and I fix mm -hmm. the books and make them feel better. So right. And Ryan, like, was look at the comments. Vuku isn't even on this season. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me? Or or call mm -hmm. them the the tribe the color of the flag. This mm -hmm. is the red yeah. team now. Yeah, I, I, in fact, when I was, when I used to recap these um, seasons for previously.tv, at a certain point, I was just calling them red tribe and blue tribe and yellow tribe. I, it was, it was too much and people, only the diehards were going to call me out on it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, Chappelle mentioned this moment earlier in this, in this uh, podcast tonight about how Jessica finds that she, she's a bag of chips, <laughs> yes. has a secret advantage. She gets to steal somebody's vote. Uh, mm -hmm. She sends it to, Devin and Devin opens it up at tribal council and tells us that is not an advantage. Yes, he <laughs> cannot vote. She stole his vote. Uh, and this is actually, I think, the most interesting vote of the pre merge here, where now, okay, now Devin can't vote. And you had Joe and Desi versus then it's Ashley and Allen that, that can vote. 
And this was going to be very interesting because Joe had an idol and Joe had to play the, and Joe had to uh, play it right. And Joe claims that Ashley gave it away. I think, I think this was much ado about nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause what still happens is what was going to happen in any way. Like we mm -hmm. assume Devin would have voted with the, um, with the heroes against, mm -hmm. um, against Joe because Joe was trying to get them to vote for him, but also because he has a bond with Ashley that we find out about later on. They just, they, they, they just click. And so Joe would have still played the idol for himself and yeah. the same Alan would have still gone home. So it was kind of like a lot of build up for nothing. And I think that was a lot of the season for me. It was like all these strategic moments, but Ben still got the idol, you know, mm -hmm. or like all these strategic moments, but Chrissy still wins immunity. Yeah. So it was kind of like a, a lot of nothing. And so that's kind of how that, so it was like interesting in theory, Yeah. but even had Devin still had a vote, eh, Alan would have still yeah. gone home. But just it was an interesting uh, vote because Joe Mana comes in and tells Devin that oh they're trying they're voting you out and then uh, Devin buys it but then eventually like uh, is able to suss out that it was a lie and then uh, goes back and forth so it was an intriguing tribal council for the pre merge which we cannot say that many times in this season. Honestly, I thought this was one of the this is one of the stronger pre merges and oh. you know I'll, this is a hill I'll die. At. On. I think I think you have this starting from episode four. I think the the I think the tribal councils at pre-merge are really, really interesting. I think you have this one, you have you have Joe playing an idol, you have this is not an advantage. Then you have the Rourke vote, which we definitely have to talk about in yeah. in depth. You see like everybody kind of picking their sides, and you see the beginning of the um the Hurstlers versus the healers. Mm -hmm. And and you see, like you see Ryan flipping. I think that's a big, that's a powerful moment. You see, like the next one is, um, next one is Allie goes out and it kind of solidifies like this is, this is the basket that yeah. Ryan's thrown his lot in with. But I honestly, I think starting from this tribal council where you really, even if it is like Indiana Jones and if, you know, if this advantage doesn't materialize, it all ends the same way. Mm -hmm. It it is really interesting to look at the strategy that each person is employing, right down to Jessica giving that advantage to Devin and choosing yeah. him to be the one she gives it to. It is really cool to watch. All right. Well, let's uh, then uh, talk about those two votes in a row that happen uh, with uh, what is that? The new yellow tribe of where uh, <laughs> first it ends up where. Rourke ends up going where uh, Ryan ends up siding with uh, Chrissy and JP uh, to vote out Rourke. And then Allie goes home uh, the vote after that. I did feel like that that got a little mean spirited uh, Chrissy versus Rourke. Yeah. I, I yeah. wonder what the conversations were like before that. What do you think, Jess? Well, I think they didn't happen before that, I think mm -hmm. is the, the issue. And this was, this was Chrissy's downfall um, was that she didn't try to come up with the fake strategy. She didn't know what the story was. She was telling the people she was voting for and didn't make them feel like they were a part of it. It was just sort of like she, she decided that Rourke was going to be the person and she didn't bother trying to talk to her about it mm -hmm. um, or trying to, you know, make her feel like it's not going to be her. And I thought that was, that was one of Chrissy's biggest mistakes I think was not, not starting to do that at this point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And this uh, this doesn't help her in her the narrative either that she doesn't want to work with women. Right. Because her like her confessionals about work are all literally work thinks she's so smart, but I'm gonna show her who's smarter. She yeah. thinks she's Miss Smarty Pants. She thinks she's smarter than everybody. Like, okay, Chrissy, but strategically this is important to you. Why? And it just sounded <laughs> kind of petty, yeah. you know, and you know, and it and it does strategically, it is the perfect move. Like she should be aligning with Ryan mm -hmm. and JP to take mm -hmm. out work. However, when you paint it as oh, this person thinks she's smarter than me, well, girl, let me show you. You know, that is why people are like, well, is this personal or is it game? Because it's kind of blurring a little bit. And her and Rourke were kind of heated at tribal council. Rourke's like, well, Chrissy hasn't talked to me all week. And Chrissy's back to, well, Rourke hasn't talked to me. So which one is it? And they're kind of sniping each other on Rourke's exit. So it was fun to watch from like a, like a competition standpoint. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely got a little personal there. Yeah. And yeah. so and it, it is that sort of internalized misogyny there. And I think this is the one 
point where you can really make that case because there is this thing that women end up internalizing that like any kind of success is a zero sum game and that they have to you know they have to compare favorably to the other women in order to get further and that that was what i got out of chrissy's comments that she was going to prove she was smarter and also if you're giving the win to somebody this this episode i wouldn't give it to chrissy i would give it to ryan Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. when you talk about internalized misogyny just even if you thought about this in two different players uh and put two men in this spot right it wouldn't even be a talking point like boston rob and russell going back and forth at tribal council is right Nobody yeah. thinks anything weird about right. that. Chrissy and Rourke do it, and people are like, oh, does she like women? I bet she doesn't even like women. Does you know Boston I mean? Rob have a problem with men? Yeah, right. Oh, my God. He uh, can't stand someone know. challenging him. I mean, he might know? be threatened by, uh, like, other, like, uh, you know. Uh, Similar named people. Yeah, <laughs> that's possible. <laughs> people whose names are you out because you were a threat. And you don't I don't know. Think, I don't think he talked to you that week either. Yeah. yeah. So You should call him out. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the next vote that that gets set up where we get down to a four person uh, tribe where it's JP and Chrissy and Ryan and Allie uh, and you know Allie and Ryan uh, they're not, uh, Allie's like why didn't you tell me what was going on Ryan like no I, you were gonna you were gonna flip you were gonna vote with them um, they try to feed us a little bit that JP could go out Ryan might want to vote out JP but it feels like that they threw the challenge especially it feels like that JP threw the challenge here was that I just me I just he I he drops the thing at the end of the mm-hmm. like before like one team is one he 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 like basically like drops his end of the rope all the blocks fall down and after they get back to camp he's like well it's not the worst thing in the world that we're going to the tribal council it doesn't yeah. you know do you, I mean he's got a point but do you give that kind of characteristic to JP? Like, I'm I'm kind of like hesitant to say that JP is a throw challenge type of guy. You know, he seems like mm. the, I'm going to win. But they told you know? him that Christy was like, oh, well, Rourke talked to me about a women's alliance. So I was like, oh, that's it. Uh, like, okay, I got it. <laughs> Allie's got to go. I, it's possible that somebody told him to throw it. Mm-hmm. I mean, we don't have to assume that he acted alone. I And I think also it's an easy thing to sell him that you're protecting your other fellow heroes if you know who you're going to vote out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And also, he's in a spot where if he gets rid of Allie, and let's say they have to go to another vote, he can still get rid of Ryan from his Mm -hmm. point of view. He doesn't know about this cross-tribal alliance that they formed because he's been on the same tribe with Chrissy. So in his his point of view, he hasn't even seen a point where these two people have come together and formed this, you know, unbreakable bond that they have. So even if they did throw it, He's got another free round from his point of view. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, I, I I could see some shenanigans in there. Okay, JP, I, I look at him a little bit differently now, Rob. I, I don't know. I wasn't ready for that. I don't know. I mean, just uh, because he was the biggest dud on the cast doesn't mean he doesn't have strategic chops. It just means that we weren't shown them and things like that. <laughs> mm-hmm, and, and things, things like, like that. that. <laughs> but this is such an inflection point on the season because we have this vote before the merge where it's going to be either JP or Ali and Ali is so good in the season in the pre-merge. She's such a great narrator in the season. And so it's like a behind door. Number one, we have Ali who was a really good competitor, like uh seemed to have like a good social game relationships with everybody. Great narrator, uh, fun to have on the show. And then by door number two, you have uh, JP who's such a dud. Uh, he has like the most invisible exit from the show in its history, and yeah. we and we keep JP and we lose Allie in the pre-merge. The hilarious thing is that JP going out is another turning point, even yeah. though he is such a non-player. Just I don't even know where he was in that episode. I'm like I was like trying to count like okay the four votes here, three votes here. Like like who am I missing? Like oh the person that's going to get voted out in this episode. He's not <laughs> even in, on the show. I have questions about that vote too. Yeah. But- it- it was to the alley thing. Yeah, but to the alley thing. Um, yeah, so I think Allie's problem is that she got rid of Patrick. And don't get me wrong, Patrick was a nuisance, and he's kind of mm-hmm. like a like a baby Doberman, right? Because <laughs> he's huge and he's just like knocking over stuff in your kitchen and in your in your in your living room. But he's 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 young and you're like, oh, he's just a little, but he's huge. And I think that's the thing. He was so energetic and everywhere for someone who was like six foot seven, 220 pounds. Like this is a <laughs> big guy, and he's like knocking over everything and eating everything, like like Ryan said, like a baby. And so uh like a very huge 
baby. So it went in the moments where Ali has to decide, do I go with Lauren or do I go with Patrick? You have this pre-existing relationship with, with Patrick who will be loyal to you because he's not from what we saw, we saw shown on the show. He does not have the capabilities to maybe manipulate you in that way where you kept Lauren who from the moment the tribe swap had been gaming because you realized she was at the bottom of the barrel, you know, mm -hmm. on that tribe. So it's kind of like, Ali, once you did that, okay, fine, but you now expect Ryan to do the same thing. Ryan's like looking at Chrissy, who he now has a pre-existing relationship with, and he's like, I mean, I could save you, but you just tried to vote out Chrissy. I mean, I could have saved you then and told you not to, but I have to pick a route at some point. And so once she goes off on him, you know, after that tribal council where she survives, he really doesn't have a reason to save her. What, what does that get? What does he gain from that? You know? So in that situation, I feel really bad for Ali because she was such good television. She was a good narrator. She seemed like a good mm -hmm. competitor, but she was kind of up a creek. Yeah. I feel like she could get lost in the shuffle to play again. I feel like there was a lot of people saying that Ali should play again after season 35. And now, you know, now we're into that. We went through season 40 and, and then we brought back winners and then there was a year uh, layoff, but I, I hope she gets another shot at it that she was just, uh, re I think she would be a really interesting person to bring back. Mm -hmm. I, I liked her a lot and I think she did sort of get a raw deal and I want to go back to that Allie and Patrick relationship thing because yes. okay. that was just for, yeah, for anybody who does not remember that they both uh, went to school together. Uh, they were, they both were at the same college at the same time and knew each other. Yeah. They were neighbors, I think. Yeah. And like he like helped her move a couch or something. Yeah. He had a moving company. And mm -hmm. it was, we thought this was going to be I think going into temple, the season. We, they go to temple. I don't Auburn, I believe. Okay, Auburn. Okay. Like one of those yeah. really big schools in the South. But uh, we thought Auburn this was going right. to be a plot point because it came out in first one out. They're both like, yeah, I know that person. Um, or Allie made a big deal out of it. I don't think Patrick did for stuff we found out later. But um, we thought that they're definitely going to be the power couple. They're going to they're going to connect. They're going to kind of work on that relationship. And then you find out that Patrick was worried that if he said he knew her, he was going to get booted from the cast. Mm -hmm. And so he didn't play on it at all. Yeah. And yeah. so it ended up really not having much to do with yeah. the actual goings on in the season. She told Josh, she's like, I, I know a guy on the cast. Like, I know a guy. He went to my, he went to my school. I'm like what? Yeah. I think she should have been cultivating the Patrick thing. Like, Mm, like a uh, Philip Shepard, you know, versus and Rob or mm -hmm. Shamar and, and Sherry, you know, like keep your guy because he's loyal to you. And then when you yeah. can get rid of him, get rid of him. But because it was such a nuisance to live with and because you had all these people in her ear, like you, we can do better without Patrick. He, he also was kind of screwing up in the challenges too. He had, he had kind of hogged the challenge. Yeah. And, he wouldn't um, give and, Lauren Rimmer mm -hmm. a turn. Yeah, and that's kind of that that seems to be Allie's kind of like breaking point where cause she mm -hmm. holds that against him, but she also holds the thing against Chrissy the very next round. She's like, Chrissy would not tag us in. And if you if you fall off a balance beam, Allie's done with you. And so I think had she just kind of stuck to that Patrick thing just a little bit longer, she yeah. could have at least had a meat shield uh moving forward. Well, I think the problem is everybody else could not stand Patrick. <laughs> I think you have to have, if you're going to have a meat shield, it has to be a meat shield that the other people at least like barely tolerate. Mm -hmm. And at yeah. that point, it was like, if you hit your wagon to Patrick, yeah. you are going down with it. He him. would like hurt himself and uh, he had a whole, whole bunch of different yeah. issues for Patrick. Yeah. Um, one of the other things in the pre-merge, wow, there is a lot of uh, showmance with uh, Cole and Jessica. They get a lot of screen time here in uh, the pre-merge. Jess, is Cole and Jessica uh, Survivor's most iconic showmance of the 30s? I could, I could, I could buy that for a dollar. Um, I thought, honestly, okay, here's a hot take for me. Uh, maybe Figgy and Taylor. Figgy and maybe, Taylor. Well, well, yeah. Tails. Big Tails is more. Name. Big Tales yeah. is more scandalous. Like, mm -hmm. I'm pretty yeah. sure Cole didn't have a pregnant girlfriend back home. Ooh, um, we love mess. <laughs> yeah, I love mess. Mm -hmm. um, but here's my hot take. I, I don't know that the Cole-Jessica relationship was that interesting, except in that it was the first time I think we've seen a showmance 
bring about conflicting feelings in someone because you had Jessica, who is a decent strategist and somebody I would like to see play again. I thought she was fantastic. Mm -hmm. She was very funny. She was a very sharp strategist. I think we clocked onto that very early on. And, but My yet, pick. yeah, she, I think she could go far in another season. And yet she had this, she had this showman's going this guy that she was vibing with and he was cute except he's dumber than a box of hammers <laughs> and he can't keep a secret to save his life you can't mm -hmm. share any of your strategy with him or food yeah and it, it was like at this point she is struggling with how do i strategize around this on one mm -hmm. hand this guy will vote however i tell him to vote but on the other hand he is an idiot and mm -hmm. I loved watching that dynamic play out. And it was it was kind of sad when she went out as early as she did because I wanted to yeah. see Cole be her albatross through like a few more rounds. And I've gotten to meet a lot of the people from this cast. Like, uh, like uh, you know, I stand by what you said about uh, this being a, a, a great cast. And a lot of them uh, are uh, a lot of fun. And Cole, who, you know, didn't do a lot for me on the show that I every time I've met the guy in real life, uh, super happy seemingly nicest guy ever yeah he seems great um and he seems like if he's he, getting his eight thousand calories i think he's a delight yeah. to be around there, but he's also the kind of guy that will sit there straight up eating a cinnamon stick so <laughs> there's that <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah cole eating the food is also a big story in the mm. pre-merge drives ben crazy Chappelle. ben can't stand cole yeah, I mean, from Ben's point of view, he's older than Cole. He also probably needs about as many calories as Cole does. And Ben seems to be someone who cares a lot about the people he's playing with. It, mm -hmm. he just in those early days, he everyone's talking about the genuine bond they're making with Ben. They kind of telegraph that he's going to win it because he's the only one who we actually know anything about their personal life. Like we know Chrissy's an actuary and a mom, but we don't even know her kids' names. But if it was Jeremy, we would know like Cameron and Val, you know, like so, you know, whatever. But yeah, so Jordan ben and Remy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ben, ben gets that content. Um, and so from Ben's point of view, he's like, I'm a I'm an older guy, I'm a family guy, um, uh, kind of I'm a big guy, and I'm willing to put my needs to the side for the tribe. And Cole is like, what do you say? Out here playing patty cake on the beach with Jessica and eating everything and eating us out of house and home. And I will say this. I don't think uh, uh, a season without food has been so jarring to me, except like recently yeah. as this one, because when they started running out of food and they're just licking the inside right. of, that, of that sugar just to get some type of sustenance and he passes out. I was like, God, just give them a. Like, yeah. A Chappelle, uh, can I give you my uh, scorching hot take of why <laughs> this happened? Because it's like. It. In the rest of the seasons in the 30s, like we don't really have this as much. Mm -hmm. I think that they starved the you know what out of them to get a big reaction out of the Outback Merge Feast. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it wasn't even as big as the Island of the Idols reaction. When they said Outback on Island of the Idols, I mean, they said Applebee's on Island of the Idols. That Karishma was in tears. Like, like mm -hmm. Missy had passed out and fell onto the floor and just started writhing in pain and joyful, you know, whatever. Yeah. And they say Outback and they're like, oh, it's Outback. It's okay, cool. Yes. We're getting steak. Like, they finally, were so they were so starved. Uh, yeah. Noah points out in the chat the drone shot of Devin is amazing. Uh, yeah, I th I think they g they like gave them no food after the swap so that they would get a big reaction out of the Outback merch feast. I don't know yeah. why they had to do that. Like Outback is way better than Applebee's. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> But on the other hand, you get something like you get the wholesome giddiness of Jessica saying, I love you, Chocolate Thunder from Down Under. Tee -hee -hee. He's not used to saying that. Not used to I saying say those things. Because I'm a virgin. <laughs> Jessica is, we want to talk about secrets. Jessica has the most private public <laughs> life I've ever seen in my life. Like she comes, I'm, what's, one of the episodes is called like, my kisses are very private. No, they're not. You're doing this on that television <laughs> with a 20 year old. Like, ma'am, yeah, I'm, like you know how Chrissy's always like as a as an actuary, and Ryan's like yes. I never had a girlfriend. Just because every confessional starts with as a virgin, I <laughs> <laughs> you know the production virgin? makes them do that, mm -hmm. right? Look, My just be glad, Chappelle. <laughs> she didn't get to the reunion and get like the Eric Huffman uh, line of questioning from oh, Jeff. Oh God, yeah, it's like so. Are you still a virgin? Yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 
I but I loved I also loved people's reaction to the show, man. Um, I had written down um, Lauren's reaction was I can't imagine her going to live in a van with him and he's not going to leave his van. <laughs> <laughs> it's so that was, that was on the show. That was on the show. Yeah. Wait, I like I like when uh Cole reveals that Jessica Jessica's advantage, you know, to the rest of the tribe. First he tells Ben because he's like, Ben, this is gonna be a good ally for me. Let me go tell someone else's secret. Then he goes and tells I don't remember who the next person was. Mike, right? No, Mike found out third. Mm -hmm. Um, he he told someone else, and then they go. Oh, he told Lauren. He told Lauren Rimmer. So he goes back. Mike shows up and says, "Hey, Cole. People are saying Jessica has an advantage. Did you tell anybody?" He's like, "No, absolutely not. I did not tell <laughs> Lauren. I refused. I would never tell Lauren. I don't even talk game with Lauren. Are you kidding me?" And then Jessica stares at him. And he goes, "I told Ben. <laughs> 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 Sir, actually, you told both of them, but." I see him trying. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the merch. And this is where the season, I felt like, uh, even though Jess says a uh, great pre-merge, I felt like it really starts to pick up after the merge. Although that Outback feast is endless. Uh, <laughs> there was a you know, solid uh, 10, 15 minutes of product placement there. Mm -hmm. They got their money's worth. They got their money's worth uh, over at the Outback. Down under. Yeah. Chappelle, real quick, Outback or Cheesecake Factory? Outback. Okay. Right. There you go. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. You probably pay the same amount, but you actually get a decent steak. Now, if you want cheesecake, cheesecake factory does it. So yeah. you have to decide. You can't get both. Okay. I've never had a bad steak at Outback. There you go. Okay, uh, we'll have one at Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> I mean, they don't call it the Steak Factory. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jessica goes out at the uh, the merge. It's an interesting vote, but really sets up a pagonging of uh, the healers to come. We get a really great moment in the second episode after the merge where this is really where I feel like survivors should be focused. <laughs> less on the twists, less on the advantages, but more dilemmas uh well, and this was a dilemma that led to an advantage but this is the best way to do it and i think one of the best things overall about the season just let's talk about the spaghetti tray reward oh my god yeah i think less less advantages more eating spaghetti off of a cloth napkin and acting like that's normal mm -hmm. oh, oh it was so great <laughs> I, and it's better i think like they tried to do this in early seasons where they would have this reward where the person that won the reward would pick what meal they were going to eat yeah. and then assign the other meals to other people and this is better this is like not only do you you kind of have your own you have your own like you have to figure out like how much will people how much can you eat without people thinking you ate too much yes. and how much you eat for other people? But then there is also a clue on the plate. You can't scrape it off the plate. Mm -hmm. You can't, you know, you can try to cover up the plate or you can hide the plate in the woods. This was, this was gold. This, this was everything gold. we want from survivor. Uh, yeah. There was deception. There was uh, like, who could, who could figure it out? What were they going to do with that information? Uh, it was a great Australian survivor. We'd go on to do this many times uh, over the uh, next couple seasons. Uh, Chappelle, would you think it was sus if you showed up for a plate of spaghetti that was on a napkin? Of course. It, I think I think this was interesting because it was it was fun to watch, but it also separated the game bots from the actual people who came to play amongst people, right? So you you get Devin going in and saying, you know what? I got to make sure I use portion control. I don't want to eat too much. I took a little bit more than everybody else because I really want everybody to have some. You have Cole who's like, I'm hungry and I'm going to eat more than everybody because I'm at the bottom. Ooh, look, at advantage. And he sees it. And he's like, oh, I'll just cover it up with a napkin. But then you have Chrissy who comes in and she's like, where's the advantage? Let me tear apart the napkin. Let me tear apart, like throws this into the wood. She's looking for it, finds it. And she's like, huh, I'll leave this for my ally Ryan as well. So Ryan comes in, mm -hmm. goes, sees it, and then he throws the plate away. Joe comes, no fanfare at all. He does it. <laughs> He, oh, I'm eating off of a, a napkin and, a, and, and it's fine. You know, like this, this tells you kind of what kind of people they cast it for this season. Mm -hmm. Some people coming in looking for advantage at all times. And some people who just kind of take their foot off the gas a little bit. I enjoyed this moment, but it, it was bad for some people. Cole, what are you doing? Throw the play. Yeah. Just why haven't they gone back to this? Well, there, there's so know. many bad things that they do every single season. This was the best thing in the whole show. 
and they never would go back to it. There are so many things in this season. This is probably the number one thing. There are so many things this season where I'm like, why don't they do that again? They have some of the greatest looking challenges that you mm-hmm. never see again. They have, you know, ha- they we've talked about the God Idol, but this, this is, it's fantastic because it's gross and it's strategic yeah. and it's kind of slapsticky. And it's yeah. like all of these things and it kind of, it changes the game a little bit. And then on top of this, the very next scene then goes into who knows where it is and who's going to get it. And you have this like, and then who does everybody think has it? Because then that, Mm -hmm. that results in Cole getting asked, why would you tuck your shirt into your pants just now? It's a long shirt. I have a long (laughs) shirt. It's 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 like a dress. Yeah. It's a long shirt. You know, the moment that led up to this is something that we also see as a pattern is that Chrissy just feels mm-hmm. like she can whisper stuff in front of people and they just won't know. So <laughs> yeah, <that> was- <laughs> <laughs> she loves talking strategy right in front of you. Like if you're sitting within six feet of her, that's she's definitely going to give away her whole entire plan. Um, so at the Outback uh challenge when she finally links up with ben after being separated through the swaps she's like okay ben you're still my number one ben's like could you please stop talking to me i'm trying to eat and also people can hear you she's like no they can't hear you so then she does the same <laughs> thing after they find the plate on that other reward with the spaghetti she's like mm-hmm. so ryan did you see, did you see what i left you ryan's like uh, uh i saw it but could you chill she's like no no but did you just see it because where, where is it going to be at? and cole is like i'm sitting next to you i can hear you person yeah, what are you whispering about uh, nothing right. <laughs> Even to the point of the family visit where she's sitting like it's her her husband and Ryan's dad. And she's like, yeah, me and Ryan have a final two, but we're at the bottom. Well, who's who's aligned with who? There's Ashley and her dad. Yeah, Ashley's mm-hmm. at the power the power line. So like, ma'am, can you wait till this woman goes to the restroom or something? Why are you doing this right in front of everyone? It's it's insane to me. But I did like that battle royal. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, that, that was wild. Um Ultimately, uh, in that episode, uh, Desi is going to go out. We haven't yeah. talked much about uh, Desi. And uh, Desi, Desi was <laughs> uh, surprisingly, uh, she was very good. Ooh. Yeah, she you was. Talk about things yes. they should do again. Desi. They should yes. bring Desi back mm-hmm. every season forever. Number one thing on the board, bring Desi back. Bring, bring Desi back. Yeah, mm-hmm. why not? Yeah. Oh, my God. You want to talk about going to the jur- like going to Ponderosa and coming back and just like stealing my heart and just throwing it up into the into the wilderness. I'm like, mm-hmm. ah, that's it. Um, gone too soon. Please come play again, please. <laughs> yeah, she had one to of the deal best Joe a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it seems like she got lumped in with Joe, and then uh, like was unable to. She she was sort of like a casualty of like people being annoyed with him. Mm-hmm. They, but she uh, was yeah. She was she uh, she was a good player. She was. It's something about a woman with core strength. It's just, whew, you know, mm-hmm. those challenges. She was knocking them out. Very, very excited to see Desi on my screen. Would like to see her on the screen again. Hopefully they go back and get her. If I have to take her or Allie, give me Desi. Okay. Um, she won immunity after the merge. Uh, Allie mm-hmm. got more screen time uh, in the in the pre-merge. But yeah, Desi, uh, she, came, she came in and uh, came, came in hot. Won the first immunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> got one of those got one of those AJ Mass marriage of convenience situations with Desi and Joe. Um, <laughs> yeah, and but she was ready to kill him a couple times. Oh yeah, she's like, I don't want to yeah. work with this guy, but I have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but. <sighs> In in Joe's weird way, he actually did show a lot of a- allegiance to Desi. Even that crazy yeah. tribal council we talked about earlier with the uh, the bo- the blocked vote, he came in and made himself the target because at, to that point, it could have been either of them. Like it could have been Joe, it could have been Desi. Yeah. But once he became fully fledged Joe, Joe, you know the douchey guy, yeah. as some people would say mm-hmm. in song. Yeah. That, well, that yes. really wins Desi over because she sees he's willing to draw these votes on me like a crazy person and still we progress in the game together. Well, that does become like one of the like big strategies in this season. And I don't know if that's like emergent gameplay here in season 35, but you know, Joe does like try to attract votes on him when he plays the idol. Dr. Mike uh, insanely uh, tr- tries to do the same thing later on in the season. And Ben 
ends up saying that uh, on the Lauren vote uh, that he is like acting that way at tribal council to try to, uh, you know, get the votes onto him so that his one vote will end up uh, taking out Lauren. So I feel like that that's a thing in this season. I don't feel like it really goes on to be much of a thing in future survivor seasons where people sort of like, you know, act, you know, to get people really worked up so that they vote for them and then they play the idol. But um, it does happen here in this season. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Um, and then also, as Chappelle uh, mentioned, uh, Desi getting voted out does lead to uh, one of the all time uh, turning points in the history of the wand off uh, the great uh, Adam Berkowitz. Uh, the uh, they uh, was it uh, they left in the douchey guy. The douchey guy. I actually had what? to go back and listen to that wiggle room um, once I finished the episode because I'm like, I need to hear the douchey guy song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> was, and, was it Adam? Ahead. Who did the the douchey guy song? I thought it was uh was it Jacob? Oh, it, um, I'm gonna have to go back I'm to it. Now. Pre- I'm pretty sure that was uh, that was Adam Berkowitz. Uh, okay, cool. I do want to make sure we're giving credit uh, where it's due. Yeah, it was Adam. It was Adam B. Yeah, yeah, that, a perfect yeah. song. It, it, it is yeah. Grammy nominated. Perfect song. Yeah, I mean, and, it's... and Joe Man has, has, uh, made a video singing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And between that and I mean, I thought the inflection point for me was Survivor Goddess Lauren Rimmer. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a lot in season yeah. thirty-five. The, the second I heard that, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a thing now. Mm-hmm. Yes, and yes. and indeed, it has been a thing. Sometimes and it's the only reason I'm watching Survivor. <laughs> we haven't mentioned Joe Mena too much, but I do feel like that he came in with uh, a lot of juice. That uh, I thought he brought a lot of energy every time that he was on the screen. Uh, I, I didn't think it was all uh, the good kind of heat that you want in the season. I felt like that he's he had a, like a specialty of being able to sort of like find like shots below the belt that he could really sort of like uh tweak people but i do feel like that he came in and was like uh at least at least interesting every time he was on the screen bodega tony as he uh yes, referred to himself yeah if he i feel like if he wasn't in the tony archetype he'd be more memorable um mm-hmm. like and I'm not, and I don't even think they're the same type of player. But I think that if he wasn't, you know, rocking the ball head and stuff like that, like I think he would have been more memorable because of the stuff he managed to pull off, um, mm-hmm. with the, like the Desi thing, and with being so like ab- abrasive and cutthroat and strategic, even like Joe. As much as he was a a like a uh, loose cannon at times, he for the most part knew what was going on in the game. It was once they got down to that final seven, the, you know, the bigger alliance yeah. and it was just him and uh, Dr. Mike, that's when he really lost control. But up until that point, he knew what was going on. He just ended up, you know, where the heroes were, well, I mean, the healers were being pagonged, but he was playing well for someone who was probably going to make it far. I don't know if he wins like that because, you know, insulting Ben's Marine ship is on this yeah. is not going to get Ben's vote, you know, well, and we- stuff like that. We had some interesting comments in the patron Facebook group about that exact moment, um, about specifically how the editing seemed to suggest that maybe that's not exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Go I, on. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to pull it up now because... Yeah. Well, Joe even says in the confessional, like, and maybe he didn't, maybe he didn't swear on the Marines, but like, I yeah. could tell that that's like a, a nerve. So I'm going to keep poking him there. Mm-hmm. He put an Allen ball. You know how Allen's yeah. like, I know JP doesn't have it, but mm-hmm. I'm still going to like, I'm still going to pick at that because it's driving Ashley crazy. And I want to, you know, make some dissension here. And I think that's the same thing with Joe. Like he just made it up, you know, uh, cause he knew it would get under Ben's skin. And if you're trying to make Ben less likable so that people will vote him out, make him blow up make him you know say some you know things and Mm -hmm. to ben's credit he really does bounce back from that like he does try to mend that relationship with joe uh i think ben's probably underrated in his social category just because he's always trying to find an idol to survive in the game because he does try to make things right with people once he wrongs them um and even some of the chrissy stuff they try to you know mend fences on that so i think he might get a bad rap in that area but joe definitely um Mm -hmm. found his trigger you know yeah and i 
do feel like, you know, it is sort of like there's no rules in Survivor, but I do feel like that that was the kind of thing where it was like below the belt. You see that Ben is very public talking about the struggles that he has, uh, you know, coming back from the Marines and suffering from PTSD. There's some, uh, you know, really compelling moments that happen uh, early in the season. It's the fifth episode where the bamboo is popping and, and it you see how upset Ben is getting about that. Uh, and, and he talks about his struggles and, and what he's had to overcome. If you ever uh, are interested in this kind of thing, uh, Ben did an interview on the Taryn show one time and he talked about his uh, time in the service and how uh, he he saw his friend die. And, uh, you know, Ben has, uh, you know, spoken a lot about everything that he's been through and, you know, has tried to do a lot of good work uh, for, you know, uh, fellow uh, service people who are dealing with that uh, type of experience. And then for Joe to like know that and then also be sort of like trying to like tweak him about that. It just seems like it's not the kind of thing that is either fun or really like uh, has a place in the game. Mm -hmm. Jess, did you find the comment? Yeah, I did actually. Um, it was a Twitter thread. Um, actually, uh, Heather Cannon brings this up. Um, who's, uh, yeah. who's on fire in the chat, by the way? Yeah, she's, uh, well, she was, she had this really fantastic, um, she had this fantastic uh, thread about this in the moment that she went back and found her thread from 2017. Um, and she transcribes the the confessional and she says, if you read this as one uninterrupted thought, it strongly implies that Joe completely made the whole thing up. But we never hear him say this. And the cuts just feel very suspicious, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And the I think the thesis statement here is that Joe didn't make up the statement that Ben was swearing on the Marines so much as mm -hmm. he was speaking in the abstract about Ben using the Marines as a conversation point. Mm -hmm. And they re edited it to make it seem like Joe was going to make up this big lie mm -hmm. to tweak Ben about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that, that, that's yeah, valid. I think that that's more subtle. And I think it, it certainly seems more plausible than that. You would just, come right out of the gate saying that this ex-marine was swearing on his on his valor to get further in the game mm -hmm. yeah uh, rob if you were to play again would you have a, a a trigger that you could not swear upon like if i was like rob you swore on rob and akiva need a podcast that you would not vote me out like is that gonna like <laughs> make you go off? like how dare you Chappelle? like you shut your um, mouth yeah, I, I think I I think I w would have uh, a couple of things. Yeah, I think I would have uh, that. I would have uh, you know on uh, that. I, I swear on uh, our our friendship with Phil Kogan. <laughs> oh, Rob, get get Phil back Kogan's on name out of your mouth. You cannot go back, go back on, on that. that. Yes, like, Rob, you do have two children. Either <laughs> That's true. Off, I don't. I still. I don't like that. I don't like. I like. <laughs> you know, I want to keep my options open. I don't want to have to swear on my kids. Um, I don't know. I. I'd, I'd swear on my kids before I swore on our friendship with Phil Kogan. Yeah. That's so funny. Noah in the chat uh, wants to know. Uh, War Dog probably stole Joe's returnee spot. If you have one spot to bring back for a sort of a uh, proto Tony, or I guess a po what, what's the opposite of proto posto? I, I feel like Tony. I'm looking at this like like Pokemon. Yeah, Ooh, the evolved forms. Like you have the evolved forms. You have the you have the Tony, and then you have the Joe, and then you have the War Dog. Yeah. Ooh. Um. And so, okay. So uh, it's the same way you have yeah. like Malcolm and Joe. Who gets the spot, and War Jim Dog King. or Joe? Yeah. <laughs> um. Who? Uh, I I'd, I'd put Joe. I think Joe's a more aggressive player. I think so too, but the War Dog has better branding. You know, he came in and let you know, I'm not Tony, I'm the War Dog. Mm -hmm. You have to say the whole thing. I really he's, hate when people just say War Dog. You have to say the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. he's the War Dog. I, yeah, I feel like, like he was too aggressive with the branding. Like he came out with, it's almost like those women that go on The Bachelor trying to become social media influencers. Yeah. I feel like he was coming out of the gate with the brand. And I feel like Joe's brand is a little more organic. Is this a dig on Queen Victoria? from this season of the bachelor because if it is i'm not going to stand for it hey it's not <laughs> not a dig mm -hmm. it's I, more I, of a I, dig on um dale from the bachelorette mm -hmm. <laughs> that's fair i feel like that war dog probably has like uh more plans that are actually like i feel like he's like uh like m more of a strategist uh mm. than joe was uh i think joe brings more like heat and uh conflict uh yeah which it's, it's, makes it more likely that they'll bring him in because they want the heat and conflict mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, let's then uh, go to. Uh, should we talk about uh, Doctor Mike's uh, idol play? We haven't. We've barely touched on Doctor Mike. His idol play or his idol in the fire? Which one do you want to start? In? Well, let's start with the <laughs> idol play. I mean, Doctor Mike. Uh, like I felt like that he was such a wild card in this season, and you know, it. it I, I've gotten to know Doctor Mike very well over the last couple of years, and I just I sort of forgot about his game, where his game was that like when he gets in a big spot. He loved the spectacle of tribal council. And I, I think that you can't trust him in uh, like he will when he gets to that big stage. You don't know what he's going to do at tribal council. <laughs> you and he is so person. confident in himself, Dr. Mike, that uh, yeah. I wish everybody had the confidence that Dr. Mike has in himself. You probably have a lot of personal experience with that, considering uh, the podcast that you've done with him. Look, yes. if you put the spotlight on Dr. Mike, and I say this from a place of love, love because I, too, am somebody. If you put me in the spotlight, I'm going to show my ass. And <laughs> Dr. Mike is one of those people. He said, I've been waiting all these seasons to do this one thing, and that was throw someone's idol into the fire. Is that a good strategic move? No. No. He had to do it because you put but the camera on him. Yes. Yes. I don't, and he... I don't the, follow Chappelle, the one that really uh, like blew me away was uh, the coal vote. And so I think that that is at the final nine. And so <laughs> Dr. Mike is on the bottom with Joe and with Cole. And so he's trying to distance himself. And then he sort of realized, oh, no, like I need to make my move. And he has an idol that he found in the pre-merge. And so he says to Joe Mena at Tribal Council, like, hey, Joe, follow my lead. And so he really just like gets up on his soapbox and makes like a whole spectacle at the tribal council. And Lauren Rimmer is like, you're digging your own grave. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> All you have to do was sit there and shut up. He's like, no, Eat the rice. <laughs> no, I won't. I can't. Uh, and he talks about the Statue of Liberty and the Knights of the Round Table. <laughs> and he gets on this whole thing. And we don't find out until the next episode. Dr. Mike was trying to get all of the votes on him so he could play his idol. And protect Joe Mena, but they were voting for Cole. He voted for Cole anyway too, and they <laughs> vote out, and they vote out Cole, and they're also happy. It's like uh, uh, the best part of the night was Dr. Mike wasted an idol tonight. We didn't even know Dr. Dr. Mike had an idol. Yeah, Jess, did you like the rebrand that Dr. Mike tried to do afterwards? Like, no, no, no. Seriously, this is going to be beneficial because now <laughs> Joe knows I'm with him. You know mm -hmm. that. It was it was really funny the evolution of Mike across this across this season is a is an underrated story because he is he is one of the bigger characters this season and he he's the kind of big character that i want to see him play again 100 percent. they will so never ask him back watch i really I, you, you think they'll never ask him back i think they'll never ask him back he's Why? not the kind of big character the thing is like they want they want people that can combust with other people and dr mike thinks he can make that combustible situation but he really he's very funny in mm -hmm. in the moment and yeah. it was fun to watch him like try to claw his way out of the bottom but he never did he never mm -hmm. managed to do it and he also like yeah none of his plans kinda, worked yeah none of his plans worked <laughs> everybody kind of loved him that's kind of the opposite of what you want in a survivor player you want somebody that half the people hate whose plans work Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think I, it might have been a flaw to vote him out. I, st I I think that was one of the biggest takeaways I have from this season. I don't think Dr. Mike could have won this game. I know he says the moment mm -hmm. he gets voted out, like, had I made it to the final three, this was mine. But I just don't understand what math he's doing to get there. So I think voting out Dr. Mike in a spot where you could have voted out uh, Devin might be a flaw mm -hmm. in the game for you. You know, yeah. it might be something that you want to rethink. Ryan was right there too. You, you probably want to keep a Dr. Mike around. Yeah. yeah on the well, other hand, people did love him. Like he was very lovable, but I think he maybe has overestimated like the lack of distinction between everybody loving you and everyone voting for you to have a million dollars. Right. Yeah. I don't know like what would have happened if we would have got to the final three. We talked about this a lot in the Nicaragua uh, discussion last week with uh, Jacob and AJ when we talked about uh, that. It, who deserves the money was a big part of the conversation in Survivor Nicaragua. And if Dr. Mike is sitting in the final three, Dr. Mike tells us, he's like, uh, I'm not here for the money. I'm here to be the Survivor winner. And 
I don't know if that people like vote for him, uh, especially over Ben. Right. Like, what was he what was he going to say at that point? Like, OK, sure. None of my strategy worked. And I also played my, my idol incorrectly. And I'm kind of abrasive sometime. And there was like a whole two rounds where you wanted to get rid of me just because y'all didn't like living with me. But vote for me over the Marine who found six idols in a row. You know, like, <laughs> mm-hmm. like it's, it's probably not going to happen. Also, vote for me over the woman who just won four challenges in a row because mm-hmm. I was there, too. I also was in <laughs> on the island. Yeah. Me. Like what is I he outlasted have? a nest of hornets. Mm-hmm. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. But, and if you look at the jury, there was like what three healers on the jury. So maybe you get Desi mm, and, and Joe Mena and Cole all saying, "Well, we're just gonna vote as a block." I doubt yeah. it, but it could happen. Yeah, I guess it could I, I happen. Just, I, I love his confidence, and the, I thought he was so fun on this uh, rewatch. And I just love that. I like. I just forgot that he is willing to take chances that. A mere uh, survivor mortal uh, would not. He is not there to play it safe. He mm-hmm. loves the game. Like mm-hmm. he loves being there. Um, and he, he loves the spotlight. He, yeah. It, it's a it's a potent combination of mm-hmm. loving where you are. Like, you know, he named one of his children after Survivor. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's how much he loves the show. And you can tell like the glee with which he does everything is yeah. it's really contagious. And I think that yeah. was a big part of why I enjoyed the season so much, even on a rewatch and even getting so angry with the finale that I had to stop watching it five different times. It was <laughs> like, I, I, I felt his glee and it kind of made me yeah. also gleeful. And crazy enough, like we talk about how none of his plans work, but that he sort of brands uh, Ben as part of like the, he's King Arthur. And people do start to look at Ben like a little bit like a uh, Ben himself says, like, uh, he's like, well, these knights of the round table are going to, you know, they have my back. Uh, but Mike really like points the finger at Ben and really puts the spotlight on him. And this is sort of like the I think the most interesting part of the season. We get this really great two part episode uh, to uh, basically it was like two episodes in one night. Lauren Rimmer wins the gross uh, fo- uh, feet challenge. <sighs> Don't need to see everybody's feet like that. <laughs> I, I don't need it. I was going to say find the, the Baylor Wilson that. Memorial yeah. uh, feet challenge. I was going to say that's the Baylor Wilson challenge. <laughs> Call it by its proper name, Rob. Yes. And so, and she wins the reward and then, okay. Uh, who do you want to go on the reward with? And she calls her a shot. Like, uh, all right, give me, uh, give me Devin. Give me Ashley. Give me Ben. Boom. This is the four. Let's tell all our secrets right now. This is the four. We're doing it. Yeah. It and it it works out in the moment. It also leads to some strategic, interesting moments with uh Ben playing, you know, double agent and stuff like that. Yes. yes. Um, so it's it, whew, it's a lot. It's a lot. I think the one flaw that Ben might have in his social game for me that I noticed very like abruptly is the Dr. Mike saying this is King Arthur and him not smashing it to pieces and like getting rid of that narrative. He let that narrative follow him throughout the game. So there was never a point where you could take your eyes off of him. I think that that's why then when the spy plan comes up, because the spy plan is crazy. uh, And then it doesn't come up at the reward. Devin comes up with the spy plan after because they're going to go and pick up the coconuts, uh, Joe and Mike at that point and bring them in. And now they have six votes. So now they have too many votes to, and Devin is like, okay, well, Ben, you need to go be the spy with Chrissy and Mike. And that this is a crazy plan. Uh, that, and, they go, well, then they want Ryan to pl- flush his idol at the next vote. And Ben probably shouldn't have gone along with that because that you're going to end up like, uh, ironically, he sits in the final two with those people. So it's not like in a normal situation. You would have been like, uh, those people will never vote for me in the jury. Once I do that to them, uh, he ends up like uh, getting to the final three with those people that he betrays in this way. But, uh, it, it's kind of it's a wild plan, but he goes along with it, and I think it's because he's like uh, he needs to be like come across as the dethroned king. Uh, that he like I think he likes the idea of like uh, getting a little bit of like uh, some uh, dirt on his armor. I didn't like it, <laughs> but it's interesting. Really it of there, yeah, but I, I didn't like it though because I want to know why in this moment. Um, they go, they have him playing double agent yeah. and they don't vote out Ryan. Like before this, before he goes undercover, they have a very clear shot at Ryan. They know Ryan thinks he's a part of this seven. 
and they know they are not expecting it. This is why they're going through the whole plan of like, let's pretend that I voted wrong with them. Is that other Ryan's right there with an idol? Why didn't you just mm -hmm. vote him out? What well, is the point? Of I think they prolonging they, this for another. They round? felt like they needed to get rid of JP, and then they had this plan of that they had the Ben spy plan. And sometimes Chappelle, you have a good plan. It's like, well, we don't want to waste a good plan. Right, but it's JP. You don't want to waste what the good was he surprise. Gonna do? Yeah. What was JP really going to do? JP. I think they thought he was going to win immunity. I mean, it's JP. He, nobody was going to expect it either. Right. Yeah. That's, I think that's, that's fair. The, that's the salient yeah. point is that nobody was expecting JP to be the target because yeah. most people forgot he was still even there. Yeah. I'm just saying, you wasted the good plan on JP. Like Ryan mm -hmm. was right there. So now Ben has to go undercover. The idea that he was okay with doing this is fascinating, but the idea that they let him do this is also crazy. They told him to do it. It wasn't his idea. That's insane. Why would you let somebody go to the other side and form bonds with people? Because when he does it, he instantly comes clean after the vote. He's like, oh, it was yeah. me. I, was with, I wasn't with y'all. But what if he had kept it going? Yeah. What it's he, the only time had... ever in Survivor where somebody goes and is the spy and then doesn't all flip to the side that he's the spy, like he's spying on. Yeah, yeah he could have went full Cochran. You know? He was loyal. He was loyal to the people that, we, that he was spying on. Um, just for them to turn on him the next week. Yeah. Just do you, do you agree that I feel like that this I don't know if this was necessarily like the the um best strategy for everybody involved, but I just feel like this was really interesting stuff that you don't see in a normal season. Well, I think yeah, I I agree. It was there's a lot of stuff in here that maybe isn't in people's best interests, but it's fun to watch it play out. Mm -hmm. I think that's Chappelle keeps noting this that it was it's been really fun to watch people like they do something really complicated to get themselves one tiny yeah. step further. But yeah, it's good TV. I mean, you yeah. can't deny that. It's and it's not it's not a, you know, running roughshod over everybody else kind of situation. Yeah. yeah. And Mike and Joe could have gone to like uh the, I mean Ben was the spy that uh but they could they could have gone to the other side and told them what was going on. Uh so it was interesting that like the, the hard feelings between uh Chrissy and and um uh Ryan, you know, prevented them that they, they knew that uh like Joe and Mike wanted to get them out so bad that they knew they weren't gonna go back and uh, and flip. So that was super interesting. And then we mentioned this JP nowhere to be found uh, he speaks well one time at tribal council in this episode where was he even he knew he shouldn't have gone home at this point because mm -hmm. like why would you get rid of jp what exactly was he doing that made him such a threat when your goal is to literally flush the idol the whole reason they voted for jp was because they thought no one's gonna expect that and ryan's gonna play his idol why not just vote out ryan if mm -hmm. you vote out ryan you're in the same spot sans idol that's yeah. the goal. You know, what, what is JP going to do? Is he going to rally the troops? <laughs> no, no rallying. Uh, and then the backside of this uh, two hour episode is also very interesting because now Ben has to now fulfill his role as the spy. And then he's with Ryan and Chrissy. And then he votes, he votes with them against um, that. Uh, I don't, I forget who they put their votes. I think they voted the one of the coconuts uh, they put their votes on. Uh, they put their votes on Joe and I'm sorry, they put their votes on Dr. Mike that night. And then it's like, Oh, I can't believe we got blindsided. Ryan, you better play your idol. So this is just a uh, really interesting stuff. They go on a reward altogether. And then Joe and Ben are on the team of winning the reward. And Ben has to play up at the reward. Like, Hey, why didn't you tell us what was going to happen? And Joe Mena is like, Hey, Ben, Hey, sucks to be uh, on the downside of the vote. Like Joe's like rubbing it in. What restraint Ben had to show to not be like, oh, yeah, idiot. I mean, he basically just held, had to hold that restraint for just a little bit longer because the moment Joe goes home, he's like, ha ha, gotcha. Like, you know, mm -hmm. and I think and honestly, I think that's the, the same thing with the Chrissy thing is when these people are in power, they like to rub your face in it. They like to just mm -hmm. put your face and just put it right on in there because you didn't have to do this. This all this could do is make Joe mad. Like y'all have been going back and forward. And at the end of the day, you still need him to vote. Like Joe literally asked him at one point, did you not remember that I was going to be on the jury? How do you think mm -hmm. I felt about that? You know, so I, although he does get Joe's vote, it's kind of reckless. I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend that kind of play. Mm hmm. Um, Jess, the other really interesting thing about this, especially knowing how the season is going to turn out, is then there starts to be some conversation. Uh, and I think it maybe is it Ashley or Lauren who says it first about, hey, 
maybe we should vote out Ben here because Ben isn't going to see it coming. And knowing how the season is going to play out, this was the one time Ben was not going to play his idol that they could have blindsided Ben and taken out. And Ryan was going to play his idol. He was going to flush his idol. It would have been the, the, the complete thing that just like, uh, like who knows how the rest of the season plays out. Yeah. It's, it keeps him from finding more idols. There's that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. And at, at after that point, it's like it's very obvious who the target should be at every subsequent vote. And I think this is the one time when it's not a slam dunk that you should vote for Ben. Yeah. And if they'd should, just kind of gotten out in front of it. Yeah. Well, I yeah, I think that we could say that this was definitely a mistake, not just because Ben wins the season, but because by the next tribal council, Lauren and Ashley and uh uh Devin are trying to say like, oh, well, like we got to go for Ben. That's it. Yeah. And they, and he overhears them. So the one time they're away from him on a separate island eating, they're in their right minds. They've been rested. They're having a coherent conversation about getting Ben out. They don't pull the trigger. And it's kind of like the same thing with the Ryan vote just before that. You did all of this spectacle to not vote him out. Like you were there and you were so busy trying to see, like, see this uh, long con through this, you know, this double agent storyline that you're trying to feed us. They're so busy trying to, to maintain that, that they just take their, their foot off the gas. He's right there. He's mm -hmm. on the other side, literally thinking he's playing a double agent. Why not just get him? He's right there. And so, yeah, I think a lot of times people are crucial or critical, I guess, of Ben's game. But a lot of this falls on the feet of his competitors being too cute. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. they it wasn't just that he coasted to the end on all these advantages. It was that they let him do it. Cause of mm -hmm. course you then have the, you have the Lauren tribal council where everybody just kind of trashes their advantage. Like <laughs> they just kind of, yeah. L Lauren Rimmer, she ends up finding the, uh, so Ryan plays his idol and then she ends up finding uh, the uh, half an idol. And the other half is at the, uh, challenge which she gets and she has two halves of an idol only can be used together she decides to like dr mike is basically the swing vote at the final seven that you have lauren and ashley and devin uh and then uh ben is somehow uh that he's still uh like he's he ends up back in the fold with uh with ryan and chrissy and then dr mike gets half the idol from lauren rimmer and what that you're gonna let Dr. Mike have something in a big spot? You you know what he's gonna do. They didn't know him back then. Now they know. They didn't know but, him like know, that. Yeah, Lauren thought, let me give this other well-adjusted adult this thing so he can hold <laughs> on to it and we can build trust. And yeah, quickly he's a she professional out, person. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a, look, what did he say? I'm a doctor. I thought they would believe me. Well, guess what? Mm -hmm. They did. And this is what happens when you believe Dr. Mike. He just does this thing because he's got, look, Dr. Mike was trying to get his, his call back, you know, his second chance. He probably I, I already identified. I'm not beating Ben. Let me, let me do what I got. <laughs> and it's a, it's a shame that he did all of that. And like you were just saying, he probably won't play again. I'd love to see him play again for stuff like that. But this was just another moment of being too cute. Save it. Save that mm -hmm. part. Ask Lauren for the other one if she gets voted out. You know, like, hey, can yeah. I have that? You know, do something, but throw it in the fire. Like, this was, what is it, Gabon, where they just throw the, the idol mm -hmm. into the ocean? What are you doing? Yeah. There's a reason we stopped doing that. And it would have been interesting if Lauren would have had both halves of uh, that idol because after Ben plays his idol, uh, you know, if Lauren plays her idol, uh, now it's a zero zero vote. Uh, people are going to rocks at that point. Yeah. Yeah, or would they would've go been, it would have been interesting. Or I guess it would have been a revote after that, uh, and I don't know who would have gone home. Yeah, I mean, I, you want to talk about too cute? That would have been way too cute. <laughs> what would have been too cute for Lauren to play her her idol? Yeah, like ended up with a like a zero 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 tie and having everybody have to revote. That would have been way way too cute. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think like that's a good moment for you to take out a big threat. Like a uh, like a uh, Chrissy or something. Well, Chrissy had it. She was immune, but like Ryan's right there, Devin's right there. There are people that you could get at that point. Even when Devin puts his vote on Dr. Mike, which is a huge strategic moment of the game, they had the opportunity to get rid of either Devin or Dr. Mike, and they got rid of Dr. Mike. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I know the idea is to beat Ben. Like you, someone has to beat Ben in these challenges. To that point, had Devin beat Ben? No. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of he doesn't like, win an immunity the whole season. 
Right. And if you get to the end with Devin, you might as well have just gone to the end with Ben. Mm -hmm. What's going to change? You want Mike. Yeah. I, you need to be taking Mike to the end. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about the uh, loved ones challenge. The uh, pull a rock out of a bag loved ones challenge. Uh, how did this hold up? I mean, it held up better than I thought. Yeah. I I don't know. You, I think at the time, Rob, you raised the point that nobody cares about the actual challenge. They just want to see the yeah. loved ones. So why don't we just make the challenge not a challenge? So I felt like it did set up like in, in an interesting way where that the final two was Ben versus Chrissy. And this is at the height of the Ben and Chrissy like bitter divorce. And so mm -hmm. it was it was like kind of interesting that like everybody else loses in round one. It's like, all right, now it's Ben versus Chrissy. And then it's like, OK, uh, that uh, Ben's wife, Kelly, doesn't get the right rock and Chrissy does. And then it just sets up this moment where then, you know, almost anybody else like picks the person that comes in second place, uh, you know, in that spot. But uh, Chrissy, that as uh, Chappelle pointed out, uh, she punishes Ben. No sweet Kelly. Yeah. Like it was like, hello, my pretties. Like you won't even see your little dog too type situation. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like it just, it was one of those things like, if Chrissy is watching with us, you right. Like if she is, has stepped out of the game and she's watching, you're thinking, if we're trying to root for you, this isn't going to help. Yeah. You know, like nobody likes when people tamper with the loved ones visit. Like it just doesn't play well because everyone's crying and falling out because the, this person they haven't seen in 30 days and they haven't talked to them and no one that doesn't play well. So it's kind of like, duh, nobody was rooting for Chrissy at this point because she was doing stuff like this. Now, eventually they kind of redeem her in that last, in that finale. But yeah, like keeping the loved one from the Marine who has PTSD, who's been having a really hard time out here being on the outs mm -hmm. anyway, it's not going to get you a lot of uh, votes in the end, I don't think. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't a good look, but mm -hmm. counterpoint, the way that Ben was acting like the stars were aligning for him and that everything good that happened to him was a sign from the universe and that he was entitled to have this and it, that if Chrissy wins this challenge, it is, you know, it is specifically to wrench the loved one out of his arms when it's like she also has a loved one. Mm -hmm. it, it was a little over the top and like the yeah. same way when he gets his letter from home and he's like my wife sent me the idol and it, it mm -hmm. almost like ben has this grandiose sense of um entitlement at a certain point where it's like everything is revolving around him and that's what the editing is telling us that's what the narrative is telling us and it, it's but he, nobody ever does it quite as openly as ben yeah. does and it makes it really hard to watch the show is like a little bit one-sided in that this is ben's story of yeah. uh heroes versus healers versus hustlers right. like uh and, and nobody is a close second yeah. right it, and it's it, yeah it's kind of like chrissy didn't she could have maybe not said you're not yeah. getting your loved one but she also got her loved one it's not mm -hmm. like she was winning the right to deprive ben of his loved yeah. one and I, I will mm -hmm. say that Christy does have a pretty decent arc over the course of the season. I feel like it's somewhat even like uh, Holly Hoffman esque, uh, where you know that, and not to, as as to the degree that Holly was sort of like really down and out where she wanted to quit the game. But you know, she is sort of like throwing up on uh, day three and is seen as somebody who's holding people back in the challenges in the pre merge. There's the you know I think that is it. Uh, I guess Allie is down on Chrissy if she blew one of the challenges in the pre merge, and she goes on to win four immunities. Uh, and have a really great run and is probably the person that the fans are most clamoring for to come back uh, from this season. Uh, maybe her or Lauren Rimmer out of the people uh, who haven't played again. And so she does have like a really great arc over the course of the season. Yeah. And I'll defend, Doc, I'll defend Ben a little bit. You know, it's easy to think the world revolves you around you when production is hoping you at every turn. Allegedly. <laughs> mm, allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Look, when you're hot, you're hot. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. A uh, couple other things uh, from the season. Yeah, we probably didn't do uh, enough justice to Devin uh, putting a vote on Dr. Mike uh, at the final five tribal council. Uh, it was a really good move. I believe it's the first time that we see that come up. In hindsight, uh, I feel like that the show really uh, telegraphs it at the finale. Um, you know, I feel like that we give it a lot of credit. Uh, but Jeff is like going out to the audience like, all right, Devin said he's got a feeling about Dr. Mike. What do you think he should do? 
Ben's got an idol. This is the, one of the most egregious finales. Uh, it's a <laughs> in wild that regard. finale. Jeff is shot out of a cannon throughout the entire finale. It was almost like Tyler Perry was in the locker room, like giving him a pep talk, like do all of these terrible things that everybody hates. You got it, buddy. Get out there. It be a host. Started with some good ideas in the uh, in the with, opening, and then he yeah, talked to multiple with, children. Yeah. We well, started with uh, Rob Sesternino you know, in the finale. You know. <laughs> I wore the same shirt that I wore that day. Uh, yeah. Got right now. Yes, I'm that's kidding. what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he only has one shirt, Chappelle. I only have one shirt, Basically. Chappelle. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, they op they opened up the finale of like uh, like Survivor. It's like a playground. Look, here's your favorite survivors that are out there. Sesternino, Andrea, Cochran are all here and then like uh and then come inside and they really tried to and i and i do feel like that this starts here in season uh i guess it's 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 been for even beyond this but jeff really hits the, the us over the head with survivor it's the family show you grow up watching it and then you go to be on it and that's where everywhere you want to be and this is where every survivor fan's dream is it's the finale and all the kids that grew up watching survivor are here say hi everybody uh and and jeff goes to the audience a lot in between that the reunion show is 14 minutes i think we talked to three people that were on the cast in the reunion show but we talked to every member of the audience oh yeah it's the worst yeah, it's pretty bad. And to your point, he definitely telegraphs the Devin move. Like mm -hmm. it's impressive. The move is impressive. But it honestly, what else was Devin supposed to do? Ben has found three idols. Do you think he's just supposed to say, Well, I guess I'll just leave it up to chance? Like even the people in the audience are like, Jeff's like, uh, okay, what what would you do in this situation? Well, I vote for Mike. Why? Because what else would I do? Yeah. Why wouldn't I? It's like, like, come on, man. See, that's it's a strategy that's game. Exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, like, yeah. Let, let's that's go to this little girl. Who would you vote for, Ben? Oh my God! It's almost like yeah. we've been telling you all season to vote for Ben. Wow. <laughs> like, then, yeah, they, they, they started then for a couple of seasons. This is the first of the seasons where a kid votes for the winner. Yeah, we get that a lot. Mm. Um, but mm. yeah, so a uh, good job by Devin. Who uh, and we haven't talked much about him. Uh, that all right. Jess, uh, Devin, overrated, underrated, or uh, overrated, underrated. I think underrated. I think he was a he was a very smart strategic player. I think he would have won against anybody in the finals. Chappelle, how about you? Um, probably a little overrated. Uh, I was looking. So I, when I went into the season, I was specifically looking for certain things. I wanted to see what Ben did well, aside from the idols. I wanted to see what Chrissy did well, aside from the you know the uh, challenge wins. And then I wanted to see if Devin was worth the hype. And I think in the post merge, he really does. At, like, I think it's episode 10 when they mm -hmm. develop that seven person alliance. That's when he comes alive th up through the end. Um, when he, uh, goes home at the fire making challenge, but the pre-merge, yeah, he was kind of just in a good spot. You know, the Ryan thing really helped him out because he was aligned with someone who had a cross tribal alliance. He's very good at challenges. He's a surfer guy. So they're always pretty much going to do that well. And, uh, the strategy part, at the end was pretty good. The problem is your strategy is for not when someone wins all the challenges and someone wins all the idols. Then at that point, you're just trying to buy time, you know? And so yeah. I think maybe if, if it was a different situation, he could probably do a lot more to impress me. But I thought he was really good because like I just said, he probably would have won had he made it to the end. Um, but I do think that there's like this, um, remember, like people remember him as this person who was a strategic mastermind throughout the whole game, kind of like a puppet master. And he really wasn't. He was more like Ryan's avatar. You know, Ryan cannot make these social bonds with people like like uh, mm -hmm. Devin can. So he's using him. Uh, that's interesting. And, yeah. And then, um, and, and it came up in the final tribal council. Like they literally look at Devin and say, is Ryan telling the truth? And Devin's like, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like, like, I, had, yeah. Uh, I had social bonds through these people through uh, Devin. Which, and Devin could have uh, easily said, no, 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 no. I was the lead. But he was like, no, no, Ryan's probably- He voted for him. He voted for him. You know, that I went and I listened to my interviews with the final five from uh, being at the finale. And uh, that this was good because I had a lot of the same questions that, and I just forgot all the answers. Uh, but I, <laughs> so I was like, I, I wonder if, who would have Devin voted for if he didn't vote for Ryan? And I asked him and he said that he would have definitely voted for Ben. He would have been another, he would have been another- Ben vote uh, that if Ryan was if it was a you know final two between Ben and Chrissy. Yeah, I just don't think she had put herself the moment when Ryan and Chrissy and he we had a final three with them. 
Yeah, th that's the problem. The moment they decide, let's get the gang back together, they were signing up for a final three with one of the better players that was left in the game. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mike was right there. You know, like, this is, <laughs> I, he was right there. That's what Dr. I'm saying. Dr. Mike would have put on a spectacle in the Final Travel Council. Oh, that would have been the so best Final Travel Council good. in the history of the show. I'm sorry I didn't yeah. get to see that. Because, mm -hmm. you know, this so Dr. Mike is a person that every time you bring him on the podcast, he brings multiple bits. Yes, mm -hmm. he's going to bring Imagine a lot bits. to that Final Tribal Council. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine the bits he would have brought to Final Tribal Council. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry, I brought some props. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah, it would be wild. It would be wild uh, if that was it. Another, yeah, Devin, he does, reference. he does have some interesting uh, strategic ideas uh, that he is the person that comes up with the spy plan. He puts the vote on Dr. Mike when nobody else is thinking to do that at the Final Five. He does have some, uh, some good moves. He also has some weird moves in the game that... It, it, it's him and Ashley, uh, like are down to me and, and kudos to Ashley, who we uh, have not really mentioned. Uh, she does win three immunities in this season, sort of gets overshadowed by the fact uh, that Chrissy wins four. Uh, but that it's it's him and Ashley down to it, and then they're like negotiating, and he's like saying like, "Well, Jeff, uh, Ashley and I." Uh, we feel very comfortable in our bond together, and so we don't care if the rest of the tribe sees us uh, strategizing. Like, what are you doing? What yeah. is this? Just straight up just says it. That's what I'm saying. Like, there were some glaring errors in this man's game. Like, that doesn't make any sense to be like, oh, yeah, me and Ashley have a thing. And then to completely burn her the way he did, you could be burning yeah. a vote there. Like, he just cut her like how Ryan had been cutting all his allies up to that point. Yeah. You know? And so for me, it was like, okay, there's some good stuff here. But even that spy plan, that's stupid. Just vote out Ryan. Yeah. I don't care. No one can convince um, me that that's a good plan. Also, let me say before I get tweets, uh, two immunity wins for Ashley. Sorry oh, about that. No, sorry okay. about that. No, dare only, you, Rob. Only, only two, not three. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and, and the spy plan was also really crazy because uh, the, they told Joe and Dr. Mike that Lauren Rimmer has an extra vote for no reason. Nope. For no it was reason. like just part of, like they didn't have to they didn't have to tell her that they had that. They could have said if, if anything, they could have said uh, Ashley has an extra vote, or they could have made up some other fake advantage. Like you yep. didn't have to really tell her what her advantage was. And and he was behind the JP vote. Why mm -hmm. are we getting rid of JP? Ben is right there. Like Ben is right there. Ryan's yeah. right there. And I think he was the one that that said no to voting out. Like I of those three, uh, I, I feel like that he was the one that was the coldest on voting out Ben at that point. Mm hmm And to to top it all off, this underrated player gets to the final try the final fire making ch challenge. This first uh, first time yeah, we've ever yeah. seen this. He gets Chrissy comes to him and says, "You have all day to practice." He breaks the flint and says, "You know what? That's a sign from God that mm -hmm. I don't." That's a practice. sign. Ex did the flint dissolve? Did it just <laughs> like crumble up and just disappear? G keep practicing. Rub some sticks together. What are you doing? Mm. Is that a sign from God that you're not gonna win? Right. Yeah. Possibly. Oh, broke. Let me lay down. Like what? Yeah, I'm sorry. So it's yeah, divine just intervention. Tad, just a tad overrated for me. Not a lot because I do think yeah. he's good, but come on. I, I like your take, Chappelle. That he's so, he's so underrated that he might have got a little overrated. Mm -hmm. A little, a little push. Yeah, no, it's it depends bit. on. I think it, it it depends a lot on the circles you're speaking in. Mm -hmm. I yeah. I think they, I I think the deep fans probably are sick of hearing about the underrated Devin Pinto of, all, mm -hmm. of it all. Yeah. And one of the things that in talking with people from the cast, uh, that they did not know uh, that he was playing a strategic game, the other player. So if he got to the final three, I think it would have been a struggle for Devin to win the game because I think that the other players didn't realize uh, that the things that he was doing, I think he had, I think that was his plan all along. And I think he was going to reveal it. Yeah, I think he was going to, I think he was pretty much spending like the last half of the game enumerating all the ways in which he was acting that he was going to bring out in the final tribal council and whether that would have worked or not I don't know but I think he was really trying to play the Fabio game where he was coming off as this like this uh, doofy surfer dude that didn't have a strategic thought in his head and the problem with that was he could not have had any way of knowing this if this was his strategy coming into the game he would have no idea that he was going to get upstaged by Cole who really was that guy <laughs> yeah, uh, Rob is critical of Fabio's game, saying that there's no vote that Fabio leads. But there are there are moments where Devin is like, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Here's yeah. the plan. Mm -hmm. So oh. I, find it I find it fascinating that they say after the fact that he's not involved in this because everyone wanted to align with him. Maybe they wanted to align with him because they thought he was Fabio. But you see what happens when you align with Fabio. So Devin's three times Fabio. better than Fabio. Oh yeah, yeah. For sure. 
for sure. Yeah. And so I don't know, like he was on the, he was in that big final seven alliance. He then went down to that final five alliance. He then had a final three to the end, and he was screwed over the most by the final the fire uh final four fire making challenge. I just don't understand how you can say, oh, well, we don't really see the merit in his game because it's there. It's just that for me, he made some errors that mm. you know people probably overlook. Yeah. Um. One other thing that was overrated, uh, the cleanliness of Lauren Rimmer's hat. I feel like that's like, oh, oh like, yeah. Lauren Rimmer has a magical hat. It never gets dirty. Uh, it was pretty beige. <laughs> well, it was not like uh, super clean on day 31. We don't talk about Lauren Rimmer's sister enough. Uh, the yeah, sister. Sunny Bunny. Bunny. Sunny Sunny Bunny. Yeah, yeah, Sunny Bunny, too funny, comes to the, to the, she's like, hey, sister. Come with me to the this open casting call for Survivor. It'll be great. Lauren's like, no, that's your thing. Just, just ride with me. Okay, cool. They go there. They're like, move, Sonny. Who's this woman behind you? Lauren, mm -hmm. you should go straight on to Hollywood like it's American Idol yeah. or something. And, you know, now we have Lauren Rimmer who is living this woman's dream. And like, okay, your sister gets the consolation prize of coming out to see you maybe win yeah. the game. I, ooh, justice for Sonny Bunny. <laughs> well, right. I feel like Lauren is probably buying, buying her the popcorn. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> You remember this story? This was one of my favorite things. Yeah, like, that they would, they would make the popcorn a, every week. Yeah, they would buy a bucket from the movie theater, oh, and yeah. then they would go to the movie theater and have it filled up with popcorn, and then take it home and eat it while they watched Survivor. Mm -hmm. Wow! Yeah, too cute. And it's, I don't think we've talked about cute. Lauren Rimmer enough uh, tonight. That we never uh, talked she, enough about her. She, yeah, she was really, really great in this season, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, like she's completely like off the grid, which I guess you know uh, you would ex you'd expect. She seems like somebody uh, like uh, who's not like on uh, Instagram every five seconds, and she was great. Mm -hmm. e every time she's on the screen, she's doing something, and also she won challenges, and she found a, a bunch of uh, advantages and idols. Yeah. Yeah, she was I, great. Yeah. And I think in the in the pre-merge, she was actually moving and shaking as well. Like, so whereas some people were just in good spots, she was in a bad spot. People were like, yeah. You're the old lady, we're gonna get rid of you. And she's up against Allie, who knows Patrick. And instantly she's like, Okay, Patrick is my mark. I gotta get him out of here. And she just starts to work on them. She goes to Ben, she goes to Allie, she's just doing the thing. Like she she was playing the hardest for her position. I think uh, Jess kind of talked about how Chrissy was coming in in such a hard position to win the game. Lauren was in a pretty bad spot too. Katrina as well. Um, crazy, crazy cat lady. But, you know, I think Lauren had to move the most in the pre-merge uh, as opposed to Chrissy who kind of found herself aligned with Ben and Ryan just through happenstance really. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anything else that either you want to highlight before we get into some questions from the listeners? Um, I had one more great Ryan Ulrich tribal council analogy yes? that Please, I wanted to on. highlight that I forgot to mention. Um, the This is the moment when we're going to shine up this crappy tricycle and sell it to the other groups. We aren't coming in as CEOs. We may be mopping the floor at first. There are so many different metaphors in there. <laughs> it's, it's hard to pick which one it actually is. Yeah. Uh, my favorite was tribal council is like prom. I've never been to prom, Jeff. <laughs> thank you thank you ryan <laughs> like, what are we yeah. supposed to do with that information <laughs> I, I also liked uh jeff probe saying jp you are like the piece of granite you appear to be carved from oh my jeff god seemed <laughs> frustrated with jp yeah he's like yeah. give me something man yeah and, and, and it, it contributed yeah. to his lack of personality kind of becoming his personality and bringing it all the way back around to him being a great character Mm. Yeah, okay. he's like uh, Purple Kelly, you're right? So Purple Kelly yeah. is so purple that she becomes this icon for purple people. And JP <laughs> is no different. Like no one had to ask me if JP was on this season, despite him having such a quiet exit and also providing almost nothing for television. I knew he was there because we he's like a running like JP, you know? And mm -hmm. so uh, just playing. But I think there are other people who might've had more content who you're like, oh yeah, they were here. And mm. JP's just not that guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's take some questions here. Of course, uh, we'll get to a couple. We'll get to the rest on the patron feedback show over the weekend. Uh, Marietta wants to know, would Ben be remembered more fondly had he gone out at the final four without the fire making twist? Uh, what would Ben's legacy be, you know, if he came up just short? I thought somebody had an interesting, in, in one of the Facebook groups, somebody had the interesting observation that Ben wins that final four immunity he might be an actual like beloved winner. 
Yeah, so, he I mean, he really I, like he does like he does the exercise. He just happens to have put one of the letters upside down. Like yeah. uh, like like putting the letters right side up was not the hard part of that. Like the hard part was yeah. like getting the things on there with the pitchfork. He just yeah. happened to make a uh, dumb like day 38 of Survivor mistake where he had it, uh, but he didn't have it. Yeah, but I, I also I think he even if he goes out at four, that improves his Q rating quite a bit. Yeah, like I he mean, he's becomes, Rick Evans. Yeah, he becomes Rick, he's Evans. Rick Evans before Rick Evans. Yeah, yeah. I just also, think I you really, don't you don't want yeah. that guy to win. I remember I did not want Rick Devins to win, and I'm like, it's Ben 2.0. This guy cannot win, and it turns out Rick Devins is an amazing guy, and I loved watching him on the show, and I was sad when he went out almost paradoxically, but I didn't want mm -hmm. him to win for sure. Yeah. And same with Ben. And yeah, we were reminded that Devins are not great at fire making challenge. Nope, that's a thing. Oh, for two, yeah, Devins thing. in the fire making challenge. Yep. Yeah. yeah, but no, uh, I agree with the take. You know, Marietta is smarter than me, but I think that have been gone out right there. Uh, Rob got us for sure. Or even had he won that challenge and then, you know, uh, or and Chrissy got to go to the fire and had another shot at him, I still think it wouldn't have been so bad, you know. Um, mm -hmm. but it's just this idea that he only won because of the fire. And I don't one, I don't believe that that's the case, but also you throw shenanigans in there, we're gonna call you on them. So mm -hmm. yeah. Like he only won because of the fire and the three idols. Yeah, <laughs> the fact that nobody followed him around, <laughs> you know. I mean, mm -hmm. what an amazing story if you win three idols and you still go out of the game, and it's like he's making a run and you know, a guy that wins three idols and wins the game, it's not as much fun. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yodam wants to know, how does Chrissy fare in Winners at War if she's the winner? Hmm. Not well. Ooh, not really? well. She, I think she goes in as, um, I think she comes in as like a, like she's going to come in as a strategic mastermind, like on a, like she's gonna yeah, well, you, have like to figure, a, you have to think yeah. fourth dimensionally okay yeah, who well, is now what's her reputation oh chrissy well she's an immunity beast she won four challenges mm -hmm. and uh and then she exactly. and she yeah and she <laughs> beat uh devin pinto in the final tribal council and then he's a strategic mastermind yeah. like i would say tony vlachos has no tolerance for chrissy because he's another <laughs> they're both from jersey type. yeah i mean they've got that i mm. think I think he recognizes that her game doesn't mesh with his. I think yeah. he targets her. I think Boston Rob votes her out immediately. If he has mm. any kind of foothold at that point. It just, yeah, not... depends what tribe she's going to be on. Yeah, I, I feel if... like that she would be fit in better on the, uh, on the non Boston Rob tribe. Like, uh, yeah. I forget what the, the, like the tribe with Sophie and Yule and mm -hmm. Wendell. Like, I feel like that she would be okay over there. I mean, like, yeah, on the Kim, Boston Rob tribe, yeah. she comes in with like Christina Kell downside. And <laughs> yeah, that might not go so great. No, but I think no. on the other tribe, I think she'd be okay. And and I think it uh, like it's probably like uh, and then you have to also figure it out because then you're adding another woman to the cast. You have to take somebody, uh, one of the women out, and give one of the men Ben's spot. But um, <laughs> like I feel like it's uh, a like a better for like the Sophies and uh, Denise's mm -hmm. and Kim's of like uh, potentially like uh, some of those women being able to get together at the point when uh, like Tony ended up uh, like side swiping them. Yep. That's okay. fine. Yo, you take out Denise, put in Chrissy and then you take out um, Ben and you have to put in like Earl or something like you get, you get, I, get a different I, I would take Earl over Ben. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Let's see. Uh, Caroline was said, do you think that Devin would have won the game in any of the final three scenarios? So uh, if Devin goes in instead of Ben, is Devin the winner? Yeah. I think so. Devin wins over anybody. Yeah. He was very well liked. I mean, I, yeah. I, like, I don't think it's like that his game was so amazing. I just think that he has like going back to like the Fabio discussion mm -hmm. of the people like, oh, I love that guy. He's well liked yeah. and he can articulate his game. He, he didn't did piss make one mistakes. person off the whole season. Yeah. Didn't and yeah. he he knows what he did right and wrong. And I think when you go into the final tribal council with no self awareness, I think it goes badly for you. See also mm -hmm. Chrissy and Ryan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people speak. People don't speak fondly about Chrissy, Ryan, and Ben at different levels of the game. Like in different parts of the game, someone mm -hmm. has something negative to say about them. No one yep. ever said anything negative about Devin ever. Yeah, like ever. 
Okay. Becky wants to know, can you talk about uh, the female cast this season and how underrated it is? It is. Uh, Lauren Rimmer and Chrissy in particular had amazing showings for older women. Uh, is this an underrated uh, female cast? Well, I think you have a lot of women going out in a row, um, which is not great. I think as personalities, for sure, these are this is one of the strongest casts of women ever. Right. Yeah, you have nine women in the cast. Uh, you have four who go out in a row from uh, Rourke, Allie, Jessica, Desi. That's when uh, Chrissy was really getting beaten up in uh, a lot of the exit interviews. Uh, it ends up uh, being with Chrissy being the only uh, woman left in the final five. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, yeah, I think this is a strong women ca like cast for uh, women. Yeah. It's, in general, what, if you even think about Chrissy, like she's a specific archetype of, you know, f female survivor player, right? So she's just not like like the young, um, you know, pre-law student or whatever uh, category that would fall in in the Angie Cons types. But, you know, coming in is like mommy dearest, question mark. She uh, has a, she she's very athletic for that. Um, like the abs on this woman is crazy. Like she's good and she's she's very intelligent, but then also her competitors were very intelligent as well, you know, on, at least on the women's side. Um, and so, yeah, I think this is a good cast. I really wish they would kind of go back to some of these players because like mm -hmm. I said, I pay money to see Desi play again, but also, you know, Allie and uh, Lauren and yeah. um, even Rourke, Justice for Rourke, you know? Justice for Rourke. Yeah, yeah, Rourke would have gone far in and almost She's great on podcasts. Yeah. yeah, she's mm -hmm. great. Um, And... I am sort of over the three tribe format. Like I, I think that H H H might have killed it where that I, I don't know. Like we did it so much between season 25 and season 35, right? We had uh, mm -hmm. season 25, 28, 20, uh, 30, 31. Uh, and then uh, what do we take? A, um, uh, I'm sorry. We didn't do it. 30, 32 and 35. They haven't gone back to it since. I will say though that 18 people though, Chef's kiss. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That eighteen people over twenty, you figure it out, Survivor. Uh, but this is much better than twenty people in a season, Survivor. You do not know how to edit a season of twenty people. <laughs> I would agree with that, everybody. Rob. But I'm going to say three tribes of six, much easier to keep track of than two tribes of nine. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I do feel like that you can it you can get more unfair situations in a tribe of six than you are in a tribe of uh, nine where if like the, you know, this and present like a, uh, trust me on this uh sometimes you could get two people that de that decide oh we don't like these people and then you have to get every other person in the tribe to go yeah. against them and that can be and that can be hard to do i i do feel like that the bigger tribe leads to a potentially more fair outcome in the early going uh especially with new players yeah you can hide you can more easily. You, you can hide and and you, and you know you have options in uh in the bigger tribe where you don't always have options in the in the tribes of six but uh I do love 18 players over over 20. Okay. Yeah. Michael M also is Lauren giving Dr. Mike half of her idol a top five worst survivor move. That was a that was a blown opportunity for Lauren on many levels, yeah. that tribal council. It was not a good showing. It's not a good showing, but it's not top five. Not top five. No, there were some really dumb things people have done. This is not this is not dumb, it's just misplaced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if it wasn't Dr. Mike, it probably could have gone differently, but mm -hmm. she was playing with the age yeah. of chaos. But regardless, like you said, not a great tribal council for her anyway, right? Like they're mm -hmm. asking her about her extra vote. And she's like, I ripped it up. And they're like, you ripped it up. And she's like, oh, well, is that tribal? Is that, is that the camp? And they're like, is it mm -hmm. the camp? It's like, yeah, I can't use it if it's not here. Oh, well, I have her half of the idol. She's like, wait, no, no, you don't. Like, yes, yes, I do. Well, throw it in the fire. Like, no, I need that extra vote. Like, well, is that the camp? Well, did you rip it up? It was like the room was spinning like Mr. Krabs. You know, and she's just like, <laughs> she's like having a panic attack because that was it. That it was like her game went up in flames like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Emily D wants to know why is family style eating a thing? It's gross and should have never been invented. Now, I don't believe that this is a thing. Like, uh, if you order family style, correct me if I'm wrong, that you, you at the table, they bring you out one tray of food. You, your family doesn't go one at a time and go sit at the table. No. That is, yeah, that is that is not what family style dining is. It's not is like generally. I make one bowl of cereal and every person in my family goes and eats some and then walks I mean, away. 
I mean, there's some foods where you do like kind of all share a plate, but you'd never, you're never just like taking turns and you're certainly never like putting your hands in it and putting it on a cloth napkin. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why are you just, it's just in the bowl of salad? That's yeah, I, nobody yeah, I never understood salad. that. Like just eat all the salad and then put the spaghetti in the bowl. No, yeah. Take the salad throw it in the garbage uh and then <laughs> and then put the spaghetti in the bowl nobody was gonna be like didn't they say caesar salad was gonna be there nobody was and no survivor nobody misses that not one survivor ever is like oh i really could go for a salad right now rob yeah. if i was ever cast on survivor i'd do that to troll you to troll oh me. my like, god oh, salad like, oh like, lettuce carrots like, oh it's like Will Ball with the milk yeah, where the baguette? Tell me where the baguette. Oh, that's me looking. You're looking for the salad. I'm looking for the bread. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all about yeah. bread. Okay, all right. Um, let's see. I think we covered uh, a lot of the uh, the the big stuff. Uh, okay. You know what I will say, Rob? What were you, you say, were talking Chicago? about the the six tribe, uh, six person tribe format or whatever. It's so funny that. Like you were saying, Survivor can't really edit a 20 person, but they had 18 people. They had six people on each tribe, and we still barely saw Katrina. Like, yeah. It was well, yeah she's only one episode. We don't know anything about Ashley. She made yeah. it to the, the episode the 13. Yeah. It's just, it's so funny. It's like you had the right amount of people. You had smaller tribes, and you still managed to purple these people up. Um, the the Katrina thing is so funny because I will never forget her name due to the Wandoffs and you know paparazzi and <laughs> and if it wasn't for that she would be my forgotten person of the season spoiler mm -hmm. alert she's not but it's just it's it's funny that you bring that six uh six person tribe format up because it doesn't seem like it's working <laughs> yeah. yeah okay all right uh do you want to get into the poll questions from uh this week of course every week we poll our listeners to ask them some questions about the season the tabulator kurt clark uh finds us out uh who's the most valuable player of the season mvp Ooh. according to the people that took our poll it, it, rob question is this the is this the hardest one you've had to answer uh, well, I, I'm looking at the answer. I should try to answer it in my head before I look at it. Yeah, think I'll about write down my you, answers. You've done That's so a good many. note, Chappelle. Yeah. Well, you well you've done so many of these, and I've listened to them. But I'm also thinking, who would I pick? And I mean, you can't take anything away from Chrissy. You really can't take anything away from Ben because he did end up winning. Devin is one challenge away, one you know advantage, quote unquote, away yeah. from winning. And then you got some really good TV amongst the other people. So I don't know where you go with this one. What about you, Jess? I'm like 50-50 Devin or Chrissy. Yeah. <sighs> I think I think Chrissy is kind of beloved um, People, in a yeah. way. But, it's Chrissy. It's uh, yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to uh cut you off. But yeah, Chrissy is Chrissy has become beloved. That uh Chrissy is one of these people where the person that didn't win, that their legacy has only grown since the season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then going yeah. back and rewatching it, you can certainly see the problems in her game. But like that was certainly my impression going into the season without getting into the rewatch. I was like, man, Chrissy was so robbed. She's the robbed G. Mm -hmm. Otis of the season. And it turns out that she made a lot of fatal errors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and But the, fin the finale episode does a good job of like giving her her flowers. And mm -hmm. I yes. think had it not, it wouldn't be so bad. Like if you watched the whole season up until the finale and stopped. And just stopped at the finale and you never knew. I don't know if it's a, as an egregious of a loss for Chrissy. But once she wins that last that last challenge and she has to do the fire thing and it looks like she's getting screwed over. And then she goes to the final tribal council and they're talking about like you're the uh you tied the record for most wins and you uh you know you're an actuary and all that good stuff. It does kind of like sum it all up and wrap uh, put a bow on it, you know, and say, mm -hmm. okay, Chrissy yeah. is very valuable because watching it, like like just said. Yeah, you know, there are some spots. I think Devin had probably had more control over the mm -hmm. actual happenings of the game and with like agency to win the game. But from a narrative standpoint, yeah, Chrissy could be MVP. Yeah. Yep. And she's presented as the viable alternative to Ben yeah. in the season. It's not like, you know, the edge of extinction where Julia makes the final three. Uh, 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 Julie makes the final three. And it's like, uh, what did you even do, Julie? Like, why are you even here? Uh, mm -hmm. Ryan is the person that gets the, you know, just gets dragged yeah. for uh, like, what's wrong with you? 
<laughs> How dare you be in the final three? Mm -hmm. yeah. My question is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. where yeah. do you get off? The Marine okay. and the Actuary. Uh, two Titans in the final Tribal Council. Two with, heroes. Uh, yeah, two heroes with this hustling bellhop. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> he really doesn't stand a chance. What one-time player would you most like to come back and see play again? I, I, I'm sure it's got to be Chrissy again. It is Chrissy again. Uh, Forty percent. Uh, Devin was twenty-five percent, and uh, Doctor Mike eleven percent. Yes, that's my vote. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I want to see Doctor Mike do things that are not beyond Survivor, but I don't know if I need to see him play again. Mm, I think he has Ooh. some videos that you could watch. Just mm. I don't think you want to watch those videos. I, don't give it. Don't give my phone number <laughs> to Doctor Mike. That's yeah, he takeaway. posts some videos. Yeah. I don't, okay. I don't think you want to watch those videos? Um, All right. Desi could come back and play again, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. What name on this list made you pause and think to yourself, wait, who's that? Let me go look at the list again. <laughs> I feel like I, I had mean, a lot of these moments. I think, I think out in the world it's JP, but I think JP became such a punchline mm -hmm. in, the, in the community that it's not JP. It is not I'm JP. I'm going to have to say Simone. And Simone was my winner pick because of yeah. the first one out. But when I saw her, I was like... Oh my God, there she is. What happened? And now I know why she's forgotten for me because they barely mm -hmm. show her. It was Simone. And uh, I'm mad at all the voters. How dare yeah. you? How dare Simone, you voters? Simone is part of our family. This was three years ago. Come on, people. Get Look, out of here. It, it would have been work here. if it hadn't been for the Survivor B&B. &B. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Uh, most underrated player of the season. Who is it, Jess? I know who my pick is, yeah. but I... I think underrated player of the season probably goes to Devin. It was Devin. Yeah. Okay. Trina Kelly Devin. Wentworth award for best pre-merge <laughs> boot. Um, it's a runaway. Rourke. No, it's Allie. It's Allie. Mm. Yeah. Rourke was second. Rourke was second. Alan Ball coming in third uh, with 15%. Uh, 53% for Allie. Tw uh, just under 23% for Rourke. I did remember at the time that Jeff Probst said that uh, that he really wanted Alan Ball to come back. That was one of his picks for uh, an all-star. I'll take it. Um, yeah. I think he was good TV. Um, I, he got outplayed. I mean, Joe really worked him over in that, and that, mm -hmm. uh, drawing the votes on him and stuff like that. Had they voted for Desi, he'd be fine. And, uh, we could have seen him go far. Maybe, um, mm -hmm. would he have won? Who knows? He's kind of abrasive, but I would like to see him play again. That's fine with me. Okay. Out of the 40 seasons, where would you rank, uh, Ben? Okay. From a scale of one being the best to 40 being the worst. Mm -hmm. What did the listeners say? I know on where average? I would rank him. Where would you Ooh. rank him, Jess? If listeners are higher on his win than I am. Okay. Where you where you falling in? The thirties? I'm I'm putting him in the thirties. I'm putting him in mid thirties. Mm -hmm. Mid thirties. Oh. Ooh. Thirty five. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like wherever he is, Mike Holloway has to be attached to him. Like that's the yeah. same tier of players. The same, same exact. It was the yeah. same exact show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same concept. You just went out. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't want to penalize him for that because what else could he have done? So, yeah. but you know, as far as like winners that I want to see play again, no, Ben is not high on my list. So I put him in the thirties as well. Yeah. 31. I mean, that's probably the right area. I think it's probably a little low. Like, I feel like that, you know, he did so much that he got himself in trouble and then everybody wanted to uh, vote him out and he had to ultimately rely on the idols. Like, uh, but he was very super active. Is that is that worse than somebody who does like almost nothing but somehow wins? Yeah. So for me, he didn't really do too much to ostracize himself. I think what it is is like imagine second chances. If everyone mm -hmm. looks up and says Jeremy's right there, you know, then at that point, what can Jeremy do? Now he did have mm -hmm. a meat shield, a meat shield strategy, but if everyone notices at the same time that you are the guy, mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta mm -hmm. kind of win out. It's almost like um, Joe. Uh, the the Joe, Joe with the hair, Joey amazing. Like he gets branded. We just Joey we just amazing. call him Joe. Yeah, what? Yeah, him he, he's not really amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah, Joe with the hair. But um, yeah. you know, I had to distinguish between the good Joe and this <laughs> one. Um, and so um, Joe with the hair gets branded as this person who, if you let him get past the merge, he's gonna win all the way out. Uh, he's amazing. He can do all these things. Blah blah blah. And every time Joe plays, he gets hit with the same thing. Like once he once we get close to the merge, Joe is on the way out, and there's nothing he can do about it. And this yeah. kind of just shows you that 
you know, there is something you can do. It's just a lot. It's very hard. And it's not very yeah. good TV for a lot of people. <laughs> Yeah, I do think that like if I ever update my winner rankings, like uh, wherever Mike and Ben are, they are holding hands in my winner rankings. And I think I, I think I would have uh, Mike w one spot ahead of Ben uh, wherever they end up together. I, I just think that there was one interesting thing also that I didn't highlight that Ben did where that at the final six tribal council, Ben like break, breaks out the idol. And they say to like, uh, like Devin's like, I don't think you're going to play that idol. And he's like, I'll, I'll give it to you right now. And, and he goes and plays the idol. <laughs> oh, but and that made me that, so mad, Rob. I hate it so much. That, that was that, why, because it was a departure from the rules. Yeah, it was a departure from the rules and they let it happen. That do you feel like it was a, it was an advantage? Because Devin in my postseason interview said that Devin wanted him to do it, so that he knew that he was going to play it, so they knew who to vote for. But I think that um, for Ben, I think that there was an advantage in doing that. In that the other players, like if there was going to be a way, like and and Mike like tried harder to like break up the 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 power structure than Ben did. Ben kind of like like uh, he he worked at it, but it was like oh, you're going to vote me out anyway, uh, mm -hmm. and ultimately like let it go. Uh, where Mike, I felt like that really tried to drive a wedge. There, they got two votes, uh, and, and in that he made the other people like vote out somebody. Like he didn't necessarily know they were all gonna vote out Lauren at that at that vote. Like maybe there could have been like uh like oh two votes on Ryan. Oh like maybe this is gonna be an opportunity for to get a, get away in. But if they all put their votes on him and he's just canceling the votes, uh, there's no chance that the alliance is gonna break up. Yeah, and yeah, he didn't. Thank you. He really treated it like him against the alliance, and it wasn't. I, I yeah. I, the more we talk about it, the more I feel like Mike at least was trying to get in there, and yeah. Ben never. Ben was just like, "I'm gonna win," and Mike was like, "I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get you guys to also lose." Yeah, yeah. I think that you know, uh, but but also like Mike didn't necessarily know he was gonna win the immunity every single time. Where I think that Ben, like sometimes, like uh, maybe mm -hmm. a day or two before, knew like, "Well, sucks for you guys. I've got the idol, yeah. so you, he, you yeah, don't want to work with me." He might have known that something was going to come to him somehow, mm -hmm. like a like a vision. Um, I do think also something else that it probably helps Mike's legacy is that he was up against a bunch of villains, question mark. So mm -hmm. you had like the Legion of Doom against yes. Mike Holloway. And Mike Holloway seems like a crazy person because he's like, no, you got to listen. You got to listen. They're, they're coming after me. And everybody's like, Mike, like, Mike, you're crazy. Sit down. Like, no one's worried mm -hmm. about you. Meanwhile, they are like Rodney's like, no, no, we are coming after him. Whereas with Ben, he's like, y'all are coming after me and it's me against y'all. And they're like, well, I guess what? You're, you're right. <laughs> you know, and it's not a cast of villains at that point. So I think, yeah, for for Mike, mm -hmm. it's probably if you're gonna put them hand in hand, I think Mike can be a little bit, a little, a little yeah. bit higher. It's, it's on Mike's yeah. hand on top. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I agree. Um, okay. Uh, do you think that this season placed uh, too low, uh, too high, or just right? There was a lot of controversy on uh, Twitter about uh, the placement of this season. Chappelle, do you have a thought on this? <sighs> I don't think it was so people keep saying that it's too it's too low, right? Like this is this season is very good. I've seen I saw someone say top 15. I rebuke that. Number one, it's not top 15 anything. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. for me, what it comes down to for a survivor is that if you watch these seasons in a vacuum, yeah, it's probably a little bit higher. If you don't watch them in order, if you don't have a nostalgia to them, then like if you're binging Survivor right now, then you're probably gonna rank this higher than Survivor Africa. Or, you know, Survivor than, uh, higher than even Borneo, maybe. If you're ranking this right now, and this is you just watched these seasons together, there's no nostalgia, there's no moment, there's no history being made, then, yeah, this is a lot more entertaining than some of those slower seasons. So I can see why people have a problem with it being so low. However, there's almost a 0% chance I ever want to go back and watch this season just for fun. <laughs> um, you know, like for this exercise and for like future yeah. exercises, sure. But if I'm sitting around like, which top 15 Survivor se seasons am I going to pick? Worlds Apart and this one are not in the top 15. So for me, it's fine. I'm not dying that it's so low, but mm -hmm. it could be higher if you want it to be. I'm fine. It's probably better than Gabon, you know, mm -hmm. probably. I like mm -hmm. Gabon. There's nostalgia, but for what you get, it's probably better. Okay. All right. So what do you think? Uh, you think it's, uh, what was that answer? Too low? I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> Jess, what do you got? <laughs> I think it's a little too low. I think there's a lot of seasons that yeah. like, it, you know, you do the thing where you put two seasons next to each other. Which one would you rather watch? There's a lot that I would rather watch that have not come up in these rankings yet. Um, or at least there's a lot that I would rather I would watch this over that have not come up in these rankings yet. And I, I do think that like, 
I've started watching it, and I blame Mario Lanza for this entirely. I I feel like I watch these seasons now, and I find funny 115 moments now. Like They jump out at me because mm-hmm. I've read so much of his analysis of what makes a good Survivor moment. And this season, like when he does... Because you know he is eventually going to do Funny 115 4.0. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like the way that Worlds Apart dominates 3.0. This is going to be that season for him. Okay. This is the funniest season of the 30s. Okay. So you say uh, with the audience too low. 47% said too low. Uh, 40% said just right. Uh, only 11% said too high. Uh, in my own personal rankings of I'm trying to go through and try to keep myself honest of where should this season be uh in my rankings i would say that i have to say that it, it was the same exact thing as worlds apart just like in my winter rankings it should be right next to worlds apart i will say that i enjoyed this season i, I will put uh, the inverse of my winter rankings and i will put uh the ben's hand on top of mike's in the winter rankings <laughs> and i will put this one spot ahead of worlds apart making it my third favorite season of 2021 so uh the order from uh best to worst uh thailand is the uh is the worst the eighth best season followed by then redemption island then island of the idols then survivor one world then worlds apart this season hhh and then it's one spot below last week's nicaragua and the edge of extinction still the best season that i've watched in 2021 how about that okay okay yeah, that's fine. Um, I think if the a, a large portion of the audience said that this was too low, I think that your rankings might not reflect that if this is already lower than Nicaragua. Um, you know, mm-hmm. because people don't have fond memories of Nicaragua. And you, I like Nicaragua. But, um, and I know a lot of people don't. Uh, but if this is where it's starting, I don't know if it cracks, you know, the top 20. You I, know. Uh, yeah, I think it's still going to be probably like uh, in the bottom 10. I don't know. I think that some of the older seasons uh, might be a little might be a little boring. I thought that this was like, uh, as, as I've said, like I thought the pre-merge is slow. Uh, the the last episode or two is like a little bit of a, uh, a fait accompli uh, with what's going on with Ben. But I do think that there is a very interesting middle section of this season from you know the merge through the final seven that uh was very fun to go back and rewatch and, and i love this cast yeah all right are you ready to hear what's coming up next week yes yes okay a- any guesses any thoughts jess i never guess jess i never guess either i like to be surprised all right, jess what are you doing you gotta guess okay you don't want to guess oh, at all. Well, you you're forcing my hand to guess. Well, if you, you guess, guess, I'll guess. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna guess. Um, okay. it is a crime that we have not talked about Survivor Game Changers yet. Um, so mm, I will that's gonna rank higher. Changes. Yeah, it is, but I'm still gonna say it. Okay. All we have right. a lot of vocal people screaming about Ooh. Ghost Island, but I think that's the good- bone's gotta be down here somewhere. Okay, well, I, but I think I think Gabon might have that nostalgia thing that I was talking about. Where mm. I don't think anybody's nostalgia ha- that has any nostalgia for Ghost Island. Like, what? What are you doing rewatching Ghost Island? Uh, I think Ghost Island might be the right answer. You might have. Mm. You might be right. And just like it was on the night of the <laughs> HHH finale, we'll preview Survivor Thirty Six Ghost Island. next week on the podcast next wednesday night the boulder comes back down the hill and i'll push it back up uh with uh liana and og phil t hey yes yes uh that'll be next wednesday on the podcast we'll talk about survivor ghost island too high how's that held up let's see if it went to ghost island and matured into a great season it's criminal that Kara Moen's still out there. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. There's a couple of them that just get in by you on like, yeah, I remember, I remember way back in the day when I used to watch Survivor. That. I, I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think that I think Ghost Island is too high because I highly doubt that you find it more entertaining than this season. Um, so mm-hmm. at least one season that I know you could put over, uh, uh, put this one over is Ghost Island. I think it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun for you to watch it, but I don't yeah. know how much you're gonna. Look. Yeah, I'm not going to watch it. Go back. Yeah. I'll, <laughs> no. 
start it this weekend. <laughs> well, interested, be interested to go back and uh, watch it. Will from America on the Patron Feedback Show talking about uh, Ghost Island next week. Okay. All right. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, what is coming up here on Rob Has a Podcast. Uh, hey, oh, look. Big Brother Canada dropped the cast on us today and tomorrow night. Uh, we will be live with a preseason cast draft. I believe that's going to be uh, kicking off live at 8 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. Been looking out for the Big Brother Canada 9 uh, preseason cast draft draft uh should be a lot of fun to start talking some big brother canada uh and then tough as nails aired tonight uh i'll be back in the morning to talk about tough as nails uh with mike bloom uh sadly uh just will miss you tomorrow yeah i'm gonna be sad to miss it as well um but i i have a day job and it is crushing my soul right now so okay it's not that you have to watch hhh that it's gonna not a uh survivor hangover it's not a it's not a survivor hh hangover um <laughs> It's it's just a it's just a real life responsibilities thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, look for tough as nails. Uh, oh, if you missed it this week, uh, the great uh, Doctor Jatia Hart joined us to talk about the week in Ninety Day Fiance. Uh, check that out over at robswebsite.com if you're following that, or if you just want to hear Jatia, uh, she was great. Uh, then Jordan Kalish will join us to round out the RHAP Rewind for the month, talking about the final stretch of Pirate Master. Maybe. Uh, that look, uh, I'm watching like uh four episodes of Pirate Master a week, so maybe that's why uh HHH and Ghost Island, like, ah, it's fine, doing great. Uh, so uh, we've had a lot of fun watching Pirate Master, uh, Seeds Baby, uh, Jordan Kalish is going to join us. Uh, and then, uh, normally we tell you about uh, Patreon all this week. Uh, we want to uh, help out uh, some people in Texas, uh, people, uh, yeah. Thinking of thinking of uh, our our listeners uh, in uh, the great state of Texas, uh, we have uh, made a donation to the North Texas Food Bank (NTFB) dot uh, org. If you can consider uh, making a contribution to uh, that great organization, there's also uh, many other uh, organizations in the state of Texas uh, helping people out. So uh, we want to highlight that here at the end of the show. Okay, all right, Chappelle, what's coming up for you? Rob, you tell me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk? Can we talk? Uh, talk about what, Chappelle, what we have on. coming up. You know what's well, coming up. Coming up soon. Well, yeah. Well, for one, yeah. let's not bury the lead. Jessica and I will be talking about The Walking Dead once we work out our schedule. <laughs> um, and I'm very excited because we haven't talked about The Walking Dead since so we talked yeah. about the little bitty kids on uh, the Walking Dead reboots. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so when does I The Walking Dead come back? Sunday. Sunday, Sunday night, Sunday, 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 Sunday. Yeah. And so Jess and I will be, uh, I, I will be co-piloting with her and I'm very excited uh, to talk about walk, the walking dead proper. Um, yes. So that's number one, but number two, Rob, you tell me. Yeah. Uh, we're very excited to uh, get into our next month of the RHAP rewind uh, in the month of March. We are going to be taking a look at four different reality TV shows. We're going to look at the first episode of four different shows. I'm not sure how many weeks there are in March. It might be five. Uh, we take a look at uh, one show a week. We're going to watch the first episode and we're going to let the listeners, it's listeners choice month on the RJP Rewind. And at the end of the month, we will watch whatever show you vote for. And we're very lucky to have Chappelle uh, joining me all month long to watch the first episode of these different shows. I will put a uh, Twitter thread out there where you can weigh in and suggest a show that we watch on the RJP Rewind. Yes, I am very excited. I know Jess is, uh, she she uh, knows my affinity for reality TV, especially old reality TV shows that probably should not have aired. And so, uh, yes, I'm very excited for this. Um, and I hope everyone likes it as well. So we're looking for yeah. good suggestions of shows that we could watch to see if they age well and to see if you guys want to do it like, you know, a, a recap of them in their entirety, uh, yeah. similar then we, to yeah. Pirate Master. Yeah, we'll, and then we'll watch the whole show in the month of April. So uh, yeah. we will go through uh, five different weeks of shows. And I'll, I'll put a Twitter thread up uh, in the next couple of days where people can uh, suggest shows. I will Just say that picks? Um, I have a whole spreadsheet of this stuff because well, yeah. for Mole Patrol, we did a very 
Mm -hmm. very well-regarded quiz yeah. where I would read the premise of four reality shows and one of yes, them was yes. fake. And so I think that anybody looking to troll these two gentlemen pretty heavily. <laughs> Don't give us fake shows. I'm not going to give you fake shows, but some of the real ones are pretty bad. So okay. mind yes. the Mole Patrol archives for show suggestions. That's and I will say, tip. before you start making suggestions, also that uh, if you could also just uh, let us know if, if they are available to watch online so uh you mm -hmm. might have a great idea for a show but if we can't find it or watch it it doesn't do us any good yeah so all of your accessibility life, is big yeah you know, all your surreal life suggestions uh just find it for us <laughs> if that's mm -hmm. what you want uh mm -hmm. kept with jerry hall you know jess and i talked about that before <laughs> you know so there's a there's a ton of them out there but just make sure we can watch it because it's, it's tough to find these old reality tv shows and probably for good reason <laughs> yeah yeah just yeah, also no, no, Yes. Whoever in the comments is saying you should watch Amazing Race 8, get out of here. You like these people, right? <laughs> that would actually be fun, I think. Yeah, it would be. Um, all right. Jess, uh, what do you have coming up? Um, well, I think Chappelle and I already talked about it. Um, Walking and Dead. Basically, all the podcasting I'm doing for the foreseeable future is with the two of y'all. Uh, in one form or another. Um, I'm either talking tough as nails with you, Rob, or talking Walking Dead with you, Chappelle. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah that uh just who's luckier than you nobody's luckier me. than me yes yes all right uh this was really fun uh the time flies by when we do these so uh i really i, th I thank you both uh so much for uh going through and watching a season which is not celebrated by uh too many people Okay. Uh, also, uh, let me just give a heads up, a programming note. We are uh, live here tonight, but starting next Wednesday, uh, Taryn will have a Big Brother Canada coverage for you here on the YouTube channel. So I'm still going to record these on a Wednesday night, but I am going to uh, just uh, record the video and then post it after Big Brother Canada is done. So we will still uh, drop the podcast and record them on Wednesday night. But Taryn will be live and we will post uh, the video of the shows after uh, the Big Brother Canada recaps are over. All right. So just a heads up uh, for that. All right. Chappelle, Jess, anything else? I What else could we possibly? I have one thing, Rob. Yes. yes. I want to send a special shout out to someone who will never listen to this podcast. Is that it? is that is my husband who. Yes. Um, I kicked out of the bedroom for three and a half hours so I could record this podcast and he is out there probably asleep on the couch. So I want to send heartfelt thanks to him for not yelling at me when I sat yeah. on a podcast for three and a half hours. Shout out to Kip, a hero. He is a, he is definitely on the heroes tribe. Oh, okay. Can I give a shout out to someone? Sure. Yes. I want to give a shout out to a hustler who will probably never listen to this podcast out of hate. Uh, Ryan Ulrich, if you're out there, come on back. Come on. back. Yeah. We don't hate you. You yeah. know, come on, come on. And let me I, give a I'm giving him visibly beating heart hands. Yes. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Jeff didn't have to be like, and we saw your heart beating out of your tiny chest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not have to say that. Uh, and let me give a shout out to somebody else who will never listen to this podcast. A healer, the first lady of podcasting who uh, <laughs> deals with uh, my very naughty kids all day long so we can have podcasts. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care of a good one. Bye.